Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. I, I'm about to get started, and there were a few questions already about the stream, and uh, yeah, so um, basically, I, I sort of get the stream going for a few minutes before just to check, you know, all the technical uh, issues are ironed out sometimes when you start a stream the connections unstable and stuff like that but uh yeah it usually takes me a little while to get going so welcome to the stream if you're if you're new my name's darren and uh, i'm a artist from melbourne in australia and i run some of these little sessions every saturdays and wednesdays to show you how you can improve your watercolors and just show you my process in terms of how i approach some you know you know different landscapes different references that i put up and a bunch of these are also uh referred or recommended by, by some of my viewers as well so you might see something up that you recognize or something that you requested and uh really appreciate that for anyone who's made sort of requests so um let me know where you're watching from if you're you know if you're watching from the states if you're watching from melbourne probably early for you here in the morning uh, love to hear from you. We've got Anne Holden from Pittsburgh. We've also got Nikki and uh, a usual viewer, Nikki, one of my one of my um, viewers over on YouTube. Good evening, Darren. Hello, all. Good to see you. We've uh, got a few chats. Also, I'll just I'll just quickly read them out. So Angie um, Angie Norheim was saying that there's no sound. Um, how's it going now, Angie? Can you hear me? Okay, let me know. Uh, let me know if it's all good for you. Um, welcome, Angie. Also, Kim Norman. Welcome, Kim, uh, to the to the stream. And um, yeah, just uh, if you're if you're out, let me know. And um, as usual, if you have any questions or any um, yeah, just any suggestions or or comments or anything like that, just let me know in the chats, and I'll get back to you. So we've also got Yvonne from Michigan, Yvonne Uma. Uh, nice to see you, Yvonne. And it's probably a better time as, as usual for you. I think these Saturday ones, uh, these Saturday ones, you're not up at 5 a.m. in the morning, which is uh, which is probably a lot more convenient for you. So how are you doing? Um, so today what we're gonna be um, painting is basically, uh, we've got a, a couple of scenes that I'll be going through. So a little warm up scene of, it's a kind of a fall scene here. Uh, and there's a lot of like warmer tones, uh, sort of warmer hues in there. So we've got a bunch of trees sort of reaching off to the back and a kind of a misty background. So we're going to give that one a shot. And after that, we're going to go to a sharper looking scene. I'm going to do that in uh, pen and wash. So using some of the, the uh, pigment liners that I have. So let me know... Um, how the stream is going if you can hear me okay um and uh we'll, we'll pretty much get started if you're enjoying the the stream as well uh please share it around with your with your friends and uh on some groups and stuff like that if you if you're on facebook and um, that would be much appreciated so we can get a few more people watching too um we've also got shanolan yeah so good evening from colorado how are you going shanolan um and we've also got uh, Yvette. How are you doing, Yvette? And Yvette's um, Yvette Chanel and also pretty pretty regular viewers uh, here every week. You guys are great. Thanks for coming along and supporting me. We've also got Margaret here, Margaret McFadden, I think, uh, from from Melbourne. How are you going, Margaret? Um, good morning. And uh, yeah, you got any plans for today? You. It's a little bit rainy. I'm just looking out the window at the moment and it's, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's pretty bright outside, but it's rainy. So, but I was thinking of heading out, doing something later, maybe getting some, something to eat. Also got Amy, Amy R. Bell. Hey, going Amy and whereabouts are you watching from? Good to, good to see you. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, get cracking in just a moment. Um, now, let me just, I'm just going to check the chats and just make sure that we've got, um, that we've got everything pretty much sorted. Uh, but really, I'm just going to get straight, 
straight into it. Now, for this scene, what you're going to need, the first scene here, which is basically, let me just put it up on the, the oh, it's already up on the screen. I put it there a little bit earlier. Uh, but you can see the reference here in the top right-hand corner. So what we're able to do, and uh, now if, if you're struggling, you can't find the reference uh, photos, um, check in the community tabs, the community tab on uh, on Facebook, of the discussion on Facebook. Um, or if you're on YouTube watching, just check, uh, sorry, yeah, if you're in the YouTube section, just check on the community tab. So I've uploaded the reference there. You can open that up and download it. Uh, so you just have a larger view. Can't really make it any bigger on the stream without it taking over uh, the whole working space. So um, yeah, but let me know if you have any issues of finding it. I know sometimes it's, it can be a little bit tricky. So um, anyway, here are just some of a, a few examples of my style. For those of you who are new and just kind of watching along, um, you know, I do a bunch of these line and wash uh, tutorials. I've also got some sort of looser watercolor landscapes like this. So um, I'm thinking with the the New York scene, we're going to be looking at getting a scene kind of similar to this up here. So a little bit of a loose sort of line of wash. And um, yeah, I just like to acknowledge Nikki. So Nikki's bought me a coffee. Thank you, Nikki. Um, really appreciate it. And actually, um, thanks for the for all the donations and stuff. Really, um, I was able to uh, get uh, some new equipment. So I'm going to be testing it out next week. It's basically some camera equipment where I can link up uh, a better camera to the computer so the, the quality of the videos should be a lot better but I haven't tried it yet and uh, usually when you try new things there's some technical issues so I didn't want to do it today uh, I was going to do it like as an out just a random stream maybe during the weekday so I um, really appreciate that really appreciate your support and um, yeah, it's definitely made things a lot easier for me to uh, to sort of to set up and get set up and um, improve the, the recordings so um we've also got uh lena lena daryl powderly uh, lena from a wet melbourne yes and this is a normal kind of melbourne day this is how i've always you know when i first moved over to melbourne i thought it would just i'd never see a, a sunny day here but we do get some we do get some sunny days every now and then so um, but it's a uh, yeah. It's I'm I'm sure I'm sure by the time we finish this stream, Lena, it's gonna it's gonna clear up and it's gonna be all you know sunny for you know thirty minutes or so perhaps. So <laughs> who knows? Um, we've also got Kate Parbury. How are you going, Kate? And um, how's your how's your morning? How's your morning? And um, I hope you've had a I hope you have you've had a good week as well and um, ready ready to have a bit of fun in this in the stream. We've also got Doris from Hong Kong. Good morning, Doris. And uh, Doris, one of the regular viewers as well. Love your work. Uh, love all your work, really. And um, it's it's always great to see some of the art that gets posted in the in the watercolor, what's it called, the watercolor mentor community that, that we have on Facebook. So I'm, I'm going to get cracking with this one. And first, I'll talk a bit about the reference picture now. The, in you'll notice that there's a kind of um kind of fading off into the background so we've got sharper shapes here in the front in terms of the trees in terms of these lampposts but as we move back they kind of fade off so in order to create this kind of fading off uh fading off softer effect in the background what we have to do, there's two things that, that we can do, essentially. We want to go lighter in the background, and we want to use more wet and wet effects in the background. But we also have to be slightly more controlled as well, because with wet and wet effects, as you know, you can wet and air it, drop a bit of paint in there, and it just spreads uncontrollably, and you can't really see exactly what's there. So I'm going to talk a little bit about timing, okay, and when exactly I go in, and you can sort of watch the way I do it. This one here, I'm hoping that we can get it in pretty quickly now. I don't want to spend all day um, sort of sort of doing it. But the main thing is just, you know, looking at this scene, I want to create this atmospheric kind of landscape where we've got this misty scene at the back. The light is quite beautiful here on the in the middle to the left as well. It's a very soft light. And I'm pretty much... The rest of it, there's not a specific, um, if you look on the ground and stuff, there's not specific shadows, sharper shadows or anything. It's a very diffused light that sort of engulfs the whole scene and you can see it sort of 
almost um, sort of sitting around in the back there, uh, catching um, catching a few leaves and things like that. So I thought this would be a nice um, scene that we could do, simplify it down, and um, yeah, tell that story of of a, a misty sort of morning, misty morning walk in the park. And I'm not exactly sure where this is. I remember when I was living in Perth, there was a place called Hyde Park, um, little park, and it and it would just this kind of just reminds me of that. And so I picked that photo because of that. Um, so first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, put in a line where we want uh, the vanishing point to be. Now remember this reference picture it's quite wide for some reason when i downloaded it it's just this size not not a problem we can change it up the usually you know the aspect whatever you call the measurements of this paper are just slightly uh, uh taller than they are wide so we want to put the horizon line roughly around here i would say about a third of the way up from the bottom of the page so um i'm using a pretty thick sort of pencil as well and we just want to mark roughly where that horizon line is. Even if you put in a few basic marks there on the page, completely fine. Okay. Now, um, there's not a whole lot, honestly, to draw in here. But we want to make sure that this path is, is somewhat defined. Okay. So we're going to come in. And if we look at that figure here right in the middle of the page, um, and you can you barely be able to see that figure right in the background. If you look at the center of the page, right at the back in the center, there's a, a figure there just in the light. So if you want to draw a line going all the way to that center of the page there, and just put a little dot even at the center of the page and then just draw that line out like that. That's gonna indicate roughly where the, the end of that path is. And then we're gonna do this here as well. We're gonna go slightly right um, right from this side of the, of the figure. And we're gonna bring um, basically this in to get a little path um, running in like this. There's leaves and all this kind of stuff here on that right hand side but with the path you will notice that it's slightly lighter it's it's more um kind of pale in color probably we can use some uh, a bit of a bit of buff titanium or a bit of white sort of color in there or just a grayed down um, lighter color in this sort of section okay we've also got a, a tree that just comes out so um, if we look at where we have this path coming in, there, I presume there's some sort of uh, water or like a lake there somewhere. This tree is is quite a um, you know it's quite a central part of the scene, and I'm going to make it a little bit more you know certainly a little bit more um, enhanced and and just more dramatic uh, than usual than what's in the scene. So you know look at the the branches and things i'm kind of getting it to come out on the sort of a more of an angle and this this branch here this is going to come out a little bit on this sort of tangent like that um you notice as well there's a few smaller branches and have a you know use this as a way to practice drawing these branches as well it takes a little bit of time to get used to improvising shapes for branches and things like that but one thing i'd recommend is hold that pencil pretty loose hold it at the end and just sort of move it around, almost let, let it carry you in random tangents left and right. And that way it's going to look a little more uh, natural, um, believe it or not. So now if you, if you want to just create the same shape as that tree there in the reference, you can also do that. And you can take a little bit more time to draw it. So, you know, for example, if I wanted to create a more straighter sort of branch that goes up like that, you know, I can do something like this and take a bit more care. But it just depends on your uh, style and your preferences. Now, there is part of a, this tree that actually comes out from the base. Um, it's an interesting looking tree. Looks, um, yeah, it's got all kinds of branches and things popping out everywhere. But here's another branch coming out like that. Okay, something like this. Um, but the main thing is that we've got this uh, main kind of trunk here. So you look at it, where it sort of comes down, its main area there needs to be a little more defined so that we know where it kind of starts off, okay, like that. So this kind of begins, we'll make it come down further, like maybe about here, perhaps just closer to, this, to, the, to the front of the page, like that. Um, perhaps we'll change this up a little bit later. Um, but now we've got also some of this stuff here. Look, this is just a bush or something that comes in on the side of the path. 
So I don't want to indicate too much of that, just the edge of that. And, you know, we do have smaller kind of bushes and shapes, smaller shapes here in the background like that. Um, this is all going to be pretty soft and we can paint that all wet into wet later. Um, over on this right hand side here, um, you're going to get a lot of these trees that just run upwards. OK, and, and I'd suggest what you do is start with some of these ones here in the foreground. So this one here, I'm going to bring that up and this kind of just exits out of the page. This can be a kind of a, a darker sort of shaped tree. Now, we we'll notice the bottoms of the trees as well have this little white a slightly uh, lighter section at the bottom. I don't know if I'm going to actually get that in. I feel like it, it's probably unnecessary and may detract, um, create just focal points that we don't necessarily need. So I'm probably going to just leave that out. But, you know, let's just start drawing in a few of these trees first and um, we'll go from there. Now, remember, as we go backwards, the trees become smaller and um, softer, less defined. So it's one of those things with with um, perspective, especially with atmospheric perspective that you have to have to realize and so that when you reach the back of the scene, you're not putting in trees that are super sharp. They just sort of start to blend uh, blend over. Now, you might think the composition is something that you want to change around. I always, try to change around a composition a little bit even if i just love that photograph and i'm very attached to the photograph um, i always try to, to see if there's a way that i can improve it um, and improve it in terms of you know if i if there's a specific thing i like about it i might want to exaggerate it so for example this these branches that are coming across from the right to the left i like that sense of connectedness and this almost this um, kind of arching looming shape coming over towards the left of the scene and so I want to just emphasize that a little more with some of these branches and um, yeah just just basically you know get in a few more details than what I see in the in the reference so um, you'll notice you know this is something that I do in a lot of my compositions I'll change it around and until I'm, I'm satisfied with how it looks. And I've got an idea generally in my mind of what I want to uh, set out to achieve in, in terms of, you know, it's usually just a very general plan. Okay. But what I'm trying to do here is, yeah, just look at these shapes, these branches, these trees. I love the branches and I love how they're kind of um, branching over to that left-hand side and connecting up. We might have some, you know, these trees are looking pretty bare as well, mind you. So one of the things we can do is add on some leaves. I'll show you just how to add on a few kind of um, a little little leaves in here as well. And we can do them, we can do them in a lighter color. And we can also do them uh, in a darker sort of um, tone as well later. So those shapes, just some general tree shapes. And this may change, who knows? Okay, we have a few more. So they're just coming up. As we go into the distance, you'll find it's just, they, they become smaller and lighter. So I, I just start indicating little smaller trees like this there, and then they become part of this canopy um, or whatever that just um, branches over to that left-hand side. And we just got soft sort of softness there in the background. So there's not a whole lot to do there in, in the way of drawing. Now, we want to put in some of the figures. I wouldn't worry too much about the lamps at this stage. Maybe, you know, the only lamp that I might indicate is just one here, uh, just because it's quite large and I don't want to uh, misplace it or, or the kind of thing. Um, thinking where we can put it as well. <clears throat> I think about here should be nice, okay? Now the tree is pretty big, so it's probably gonna be bigger than that lamp. So, you know, just draw in, and I'm, notice I'm going pretty dark with that as well, because this is, the lamp um, has a very high degree of contrast and sharpness going in there. So it really helps to define that yeah, just to remind me when I'm going through with that wash later that I don't cover over parts of this lamp, 
I want to also get in a stronger sense of like yellows in that lamp, maybe just exaggerate some of those things that are uh, that are going on there. So how are we all how are we all doing? Um let me know you following are you following along okay? Is it making sense to you in terms of the drawing at the moment? Um let me know if you have any questions. We'll, we'll be getting started in the painting in pretty quickly. Uh, so I'll give you a bit of time to to sort of catch up. I'm also going to just, again, indicate a figure here in the background, something like that, just a figure walking towards the scene. And another thing you can do as well is you can just um, start putting a larger, you know, a larger figure here, perhaps, because we've got, uh, you know, a way to lead the viewer into the scene. And you might change this up, you know, here's a, you know, here's a little person walking, uh, for instance, like this. Um, you know, maybe walking into the scene there and, uh, you know, just a little bit of that shirt or something like that. And maybe this person may be walking a, uh, a dog. So, you know, the little ears of the dog and then here's the little body of the dog and a couple of legs. Um, there we have it. You know, it's it's certainly not a, you know, photorealistic dog or anything like that, but it's, you know, it's a dog. It's just, and for me, it's just telling a quick story of, uh, you know, a figure, a person, walking through the park. Uh, we do have another bench or some bits and pieces here as well. I, I don't know of how important this is in terms of the entire composition, but you know, maybe something there just to mark it out. If you have ideas of what else you might want to include in the park, um, certainly, certainly just, just uh, put it in, you know. I, I do think sometimes little rocks and inconsistencies like this can also be interesting if we have some of these up the front. So, you know, stuff like that. But really, we've just got these kind of mounds of leaves because it's uh, it's autumn. So um, I'm going to have a look at the chats. We've got a, a chat from Susan. Susan Peterson, how are you going, Susan? Uh, whereabouts are you watching, Farmer? I'm pretty sure I saw you last week. I'm uh, pretty sure I saw you last week. But, yeah, let me know. How are you going with your drawing? Yvette says, going good. Colors should be interesting. Yeah. Uh, really keen to to sort of get get in and put in put in some of those oranges and maybe some golden colors as well because if you look at the background we've got um, we, we've got these sort of golden quite a gold era in the background and then it just uh, kind of fades out to more orangey sort of color so yeah we're, we're, we're almost it's not just one really light area in the back we've got a very light area running through this and then we've got a lesser light area running through there and the rest of it just sort of gradually gets darker as you get through the edges and that creates a kind of what do you call it a um i forgot the 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 the, the word for a silhouette silhouette type of look where you've got the edges darker and that again aids in focusing um into an area of the composition so i think this photo has probably been altered a little bit by the photographer to emphasize this sort of effect and it's something that we can also do in watercolors we can exaggerate that a little bit more we've got um city um city razak says hello sir i'm from malaysia and it's 7 36 in the morning love your painting by the way thank you for the learning Thank you. You're, you're our most welcome city, and um, I'm happy, uh, glad to have you here. Uh, thank you for coming along. And um, yeah, like I'm, like like I was sort of just uh, going on before. Uh, what am I trying to? What am I trying to say? But yeah, but in, for anyone new here, um, welcome, welcome to the stream. And if you have questions, let me know. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a message. Love to hear from you. And yeah, just let me know a bit about yourself and how long. You've been painting for um, maybe some of the things that you you wanna you wanna learn, um, and if or, or, you know if you want me to go through a little quick topic as well then during the live, uh, if I've got a little bit of time left at the end, I can actually just do mini demonstrations. Uh, some people have requested in the past, you know, I want to learn figures or how to do a figure walking to the left or something like that. I can do a quick little sketch of that as well. So um, we're very, very happy to to do that while I'm while I'm um, online and while you can catch me here. You know, just certainly make the most use of of um, of the time, and I want to make it worthwhile for you as well, since you're, you're watching and you're you're um, you're, you're using you know your your um, valuable time here. So, if there's anything I can do um, to help you with your learning, just let me know. Just let me know, and uh, I'm I'm 
very happy to to to, to uh, try and give you the answers. If I know the answers, if I don't know, or if I'm unsure about something or um, not experienced in something, I'm never going to say that I know how to do it because, uh, well, there's not a point in that, is there? So, okay, uh, fantastic. So, I hope we're all good with the drawing. Now, if you haven't finished off all of this uh, drawing, don't worry too much. Now, the main things to focus on, the 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 uh, the path, the air of the path needs to be in there. A few trees here in the foreground, here and here, and maybe a figure or two. That's all you need. The rest of it is just little scribbles and rocks. We can get that all in later. So those components are the most important, and also the horizon line, of course. So let's go ahead and give this uh, a shot. And because I've already thought in my mind what is going, what I want sort of as an end result, that's going to help me to, um, well, it's going to make it more likely that this thing ends up looking like what I want it to look. And I always think, I always tell people, you know, the painting process starts uh, way before you even uh, put your brush on the paper, before you're even, um, yeah, before you're even drawing, you're sort of looking at the reference and you're composing in your mind. And um, if you start then, then you're not going to, you know, start painting and run into a uh, uh, a roadblock and, and think, what am I doing? Uh, you know, like everything, well, not everything, but with a lot of things in life, having a plan makes it more likely for you to succeed in that particular particular vision, even if it's just a little plan. So um, let's go ahead and uh, get started. Now, I'm going to be using a, a round brushes, mainly round brushes for this. Okay. And firstly, what I'll do Let's put a bit of water in, in, the, in the back area of the scene. Um, and Yvette was, uh, Yvette's also got a little uh, comment in here. Uh, Yvette says, going good colors should be interesting. Maybe we can do some flowers soon. Mm. I, I made that person. I think Yvette's very excited to do some flowers. I did some little sketches of flowers the other day. And I've got a couple of... I'll just show you just what I've been doing. Some of these up, uh, I'll be uploading onto YouTube. So you can, if you haven't um, checked out my YouTube channel or whatever, you can have a look and I'll upload. I'll also upload them to Facebook too, if you're on Facebook. Um, just a really quick interjection or whatever. Uh, so that's a little one that I did, I did, just flowers in a jar. That took me about 18 to 20 minutes. Uh, I'll be uploading that later. So if you guys want to have a quick look at that. Um, I've also got a couple of these sunflower type scenes about less than half an hour that you should be able to to, to do these so um, but next week I will actually make another event and we'll do one of these scenes together so uh, kind of like a loose loose flower scene and yeah but everything you learn here it's very applicable to any kind of scene because we're talking about light, uh, light and darks tones and things like that it all at the end of the day um, can be applied to any type of scene so what I'm doing here is I've got a number 10 round brush and I'm going through and I'm just adding water into areas of the painting, especially in the background section here where I want to create some softness. Okay. And uh, another thing to remember is that we, when we're doing watercolors, we want to approach the watercolors in terms of layers. So, uh, what does that mean? So basically, if you've got, you know, there's only so much detail that you can actually include in one particular layer. So I try to simplify this down. In the first layer, we're going to put all these sort of warmer, lovely sort of warmer colors running in from the background. This brush has got some some paint on it. I think that's it's either yellow or green. I don't know. Um, and we're going to go through and, you know, a little bit of this color running through it's it's just it's just water if, 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 if you've just picked up water that's what that's what you want i don't know why i've got some of this color in here but you know it doesn't matter it's so light that we're going to be able to get it out anyway overpower it um so overall this the entire scene we're going to just give it a little wash a little just just a wet a wet color like this and this is going to make it very easy for us then to put in our lighter tones or the warm tones running through here without it kind of um, looking too sharp. 
because that's in our first sort of wash, okay? So look at that, it's just wet. Um, and, and the way you tell that an area is completely wet is you look at the, the, the paper from a slight kind of angle. So, and you'll be able to see that the, the paper has a kind of sheen to it, slightly, um, you know, a slight sheen to it. Now, we don't want the paper so wet that it's just soaking in there's puddles everywhere and stuff like that. But we do want it wet enough so that when I go in, um, that paint is going to spread. And so I, I often actually just, you know, I, you know, notice I'm just going over pieces of the paper quite often, um, quite a lot like this. It just ensures that that water sort of soaks into the paper a little bit. Now, what I want to do first is pick up a light sort of color. I'm going to pick up a bit of this. Um, it's, it's a quinacridone gold sort of color running through the back. It's a very, very lovely golden kind of color. Um, I'm quite obsessed with this this color recently and that I, I just um, I've been using it's a little bit like that and you'll notice it's just all you know where does that yellow that really light color emanate from it comes all the way from the back like that and then it goes all the way out to the left hand side um, like this here okay all the way down there and out out of the scene we can even put in a little bit of lemon yellow to see how that looks I mean that's pretty bright um, like that Okay, and then as we go out of the scene, what happens is that we're going to get kind of these more orangey sort of uh, hues. So I've mixed up a bit of pyro, this is a bit of pyro orange, and we'll drop that in like this. Just drop it in and let it mix a little bit and mingle with that yellow. Okay, a bit of that orange. Also, some a little red would be nice. And sort of shift that around the paper, just as what I'm doing here. Okay, and if you find there's areas where it's just not, you know, it's not blending as well, just add a bit of that um, gold color or yellow color in the center there to mix. And remember, this whole stage here is just getting in the light um, in the scene. We're not trying to put in details at all. Okay, we're just trying to get in a sense of light in here. And some of this also comes down into the into the footpath. If you see, kind of this area here is a little bit lighter. And as we move towards the front, we've still got a little bit of this, this sort of uh, golden light being preserved up in the front, but it does get uh, certainly darker near the front of the scene and near the edges over here. But um, we want to just get in enough of this, this color here, okay? And the, the warmth running through there as well, okay? So that is looking quite okay. Let's get a bit of orange. Put a bit of orange in here as well and the the mixing as well of all these colors is going to create a lovely sort of um effect so down the back here you know another thing we can do is start putting in some uh neutral colors like a bit of gray so i've got some neutral tint which i'm dropping in here as well neutral tint now I get this question, Sh Shanolan, because I remember Shanolan asked this question in, in uh, one of the, the chats on the Facebook group. What is neutral tint? Neutral tint is is um, a, is a color. It's um, it, it's basically prepackaged gray. So it's neither warm nor a cool color, and it's essentially used um, to darken down other colors. Okay, so. I use it as a kind of convenience color. You can mix up your own grays by just putting in, um, you can, yeah, basically by just mixing your three primaries together. It's always, a, uh, that's always an option. So don't feel you need to buy that prepackaged sort of gray. I use it because it's, it's just a lot more convenient than me kind of um, wasting time during the painting, trying to just mix it together. With that said though, as a beginner, I think it's super important for you to understand how to mix your grays um, and how to get cool grays and how to get warm grays because the grays in your painting, um, now if, if, we, if we look at a lot of the scene, there's actually here the colors have been exaggerated, but gray is a combination of every color. And um, when you have grays on the paper, you just be surprised at how much tonal variation and you get separation of the grays and areas as well and just interesting granulation when you when you use it so you can get very rich and very um, detailed paintings just by using gray or one color neutral tint uh, and that was a thing that i still practice and i used to practice a lot when i started watercolor painting just using my neutral tints 
just grays or just mixing up whatever you grays you got. So um, that's about that's about um, what I want so far. Now saturation wise, I don't want there to be a huge amount of saturation in here. So what I mean by that is like the the intensity of a color. I don't want there to be too many uh, too too much intensity at this moment. Okay, um, the most intense area probably here in, in the in the background here and maybe here a little bit in the foreground. But apart from that, we don't want too much intensity uh, just uh, because we this will, it will start taking away from this point here. That was, this is kind of the focal point, this area there. And perhaps here when we get in a few of these darker trees in there, but keep this wash very light light to the extent that you can see all of these trees all of this detail back here um and it's and it's no big deal okay some of this this color i'm putting here is a color called uh gothite gothite is a kind of mineral it's a brown kind of mineral i'm not sure exactly uh it's mined in a few places uh, it, it's also called brown ochre and i love this color because i use it as a substitute for uh, raw umber and burnt umber, I find it granulates a bit better. Um, burnt umber and raw umber also tends to granulate too. Earthen colors granulate. Um, also the ultramarine blue granulates pretty well, okay? But notice how, what I'm doing here. I'm already starting to put in a little bit of this brown color, but keeping it, you know, we've let that background area dry a little bit, and just a light wash, and we're letting that sort of go over some of the branches, okay, and forming a little light um, indication of these trees. Now, this is not how the trees are going to turn out later. We're going to go over with sharper shapes. However, um, again, the layering effect and having a little bit of this softer and lighter sort of uh, color running through it is going to make for a much more interesting composition. And even now, if you have a look at it, it's starting to take a little a little bit of form yeah, if we obviously got to use our imagination a little bit but you can see the branches of that tree already coming out some of the branches for this one and i'm already starting to work on connecting this up because if we work wet into wet we're going to be able to get some really beautiful color combinations through this sort of mixing process okay i've even got a bit of yellow ochre in there that's been left over so why not let's put in some of that and Again, the simplification process, let's forget about the these sort of white uh, sections on the bottom part of the tree. It's just, um, you know, I, I think it's not necessary to, to really get in what we want out of this scene. Um, you know, you might even want to start putting in little, little areas of trees here in the background too. Um, little bits and pieces like uh, fading off into the background like this, just some branches and that sort of thing. If you've also got yourself a smaller brush, I'd recommend using it. I've got a rigger, a little rigger brush here. I've also got myself a number six brush. What else do I have? A number four brush as well. So um, when we're talking about these little branches off in the background here, sometimes it does um, help if we get ourselves a bit of that darker color. And I'll mix a bit of that geothite, gothite into uh, neutral tint and um, you know look we can put in a little indication here of a branch okay and because it's a fairly thick paint um, I've picked up just a, a thick layer of that paint you notice as you drop it in it doesn't spread around too much now you can certainly see it um, spreading around in areas but it's not all over the place. It's not uncontrollable. So really use just a little bit of water for this so that we're not um, essentially um, overdoing it, okay? Because in the background especially, all we want is a little indication of these branches and things like that. And some of these I'm gonna actually go, go over later um, with a slightly darker pigment, okay? So, Try to get these little, see the branches come out on, on one. So I'll have one branch coming out like this. So if I, cut, I draw one like this, and then I'll change the direction of the branch and then make it split off into two. Practice that. It's, um, and if you observe how branches uh, 
you know, on trees and certain trees like that are structured, that gives you a little bit more of uh, indication of how to do these. But very soft shapes, as you can see, um, even here at the base of these trees, uh, here you'll notice there's like a little bit of just uh, warmer color, again, for the base areas of these trees. It's so, it's so subtle here that you can barely see exactly what's exactly what's going on. But um, again, we, we want to put in some of these softer colors in here while we can. Here as well, you notice there is, uh, where's the path? The path is here. Um, there's a bit of this softer sort of shape. It's, it's like a, there's a bush or something like that. Okay. And because we've waited for this area to kind of dry off a little bit, the spread of that um, bush is not overtaking everything. So, um, and always remember when you're painting wet into wet too, the pigment is always going to dry fairly, fairly light. So you're kind of trying to get in, get in a little more strength than normal because you're going to then have to predict how it's uh, going to turn out. Now on the ground, I do like these bits of leaves and stuff. They have a very unsaturated reddish brown kind of color. So I'm going to use a little bit of this uh, gothite. I've got some burnt sienna here as well. What do I have? A little bit of orange, okay, just to increase that saturation of it a bit. And let's see if I can just drop in a few bits and pieces here, okay, just in areas of that of the ground to increase uh, just some of the textures and stuff like that. We've got this kind of another thing here, this, this bush here on the side, um, kind of like that. Okay, what else do we have? We do have little bits of branches and stuff coming over here on that left side as well. So, you know, look, little indications of that, a little bit of neutral tint plus uh, a brown color that you have, and just get in a few of these little bits and pieces running through like that. Just um, little indications of grass and stuff like that here. Um, if you also have yourself a fan brush, this is um, it's it's a it's a hack, but it's certainly it's a very very quick way to get in some of these like uh, softer kind of branch shapes and like leaves and things on the ground. So I'll just show you a fan. This is what a fan brush looks like, and um, so it's basically brush can comprise it's yeah it just basically looks like a fan, but they separate out into smaller little bristles, and then you can do stuff like this. Probably a bit difficult, still kind of wet the ground, but. You can do things like this and um, get in um, a little bit of these brush strokes and feather um, areas off like this without you having, rather than going in with a gigantic brush, dropping that paint in and it's spreading around and looking too obvious. One like this little, um, this little fan brush is just fantastic for getting in uh, soft little marks on the page that and we can do this so that they kind of join with the tree as well um that it also some of it comes into that yellow but i don't want to get rid of all that yellow remember this lovely reflection here we want to preserve that golden that beautiful golden look okay um normally if i'm painting this uh not live just on my just on my own I'll let this dry and I'll keep on doing this while the paint, while the um, scene is drying, I'll just keep on doing this and working into it. And then I'll notice parts of it dry up here or here. And that's when I'll go through with, um, you know, with another brush and get in sharper shapes. All, if you notice all the colors that we're putting in here, what are they doing? They're, they're spreading around. They're not forming any sharp edges. And um, so, so, you need a combination of these softer, beautiful, soft shapes, okay? This is not the time to to think about control. This is the time to think about um, softness and getting in this the light and getting in a sort of sense of connection between the the foreground here and some of the trees and also some of the softer sort of trees in the background like that. Um, and then when it comes time later, what we'll do is that we'll put in uh, some some uh, harder sort of edges and shapes that have a defined edge. And what's a defined edge? A defined edge is kind of like this figure here. So we can see it's almost like you see with the pencil. You can see where the pencil ends and where 
um, the black ends and then not the black but the gray of the pencil ends and then the white of the paper or whatever the yellow starts very very defined edge like that we need some of those in here so that's why we've drawn the trees we've drawn this pole that's going to be a defined sharp edge um, all of these trees as well okay all the trees here especially in the foreground there and the poles and some of these figures and that's it essentially that's it um you know i, I might have a very very soft shadow that i'll put in while i can of the figure and I, because the the ground obviously this ground is already wet i can just do this sort of thing just put in a little little bit of color here the base of the figure and you know, knowing how this happens it usually um will fade off anyway and i'll have to redo it but um you know a soft little shadow shape might be okay like that just connect that on um little with the with the figure like that um another thing i might do i didn't think about this i really didn't think about this before but i'm i'm actually thinking a shadow a nice little soft shadow running across the ground for this tree might actually be quite beautiful so i'm, I'm gonna let's just wing it okay let's just wing it and get in a soft shadow running across like this um and and i think this will help to kind of join the halves of the painting together okay so having that kind of come over like this maybe it, it's sort of more towards here as well like that and and noticing how it's moving all the way across like that and then starting to just evaporate over like this and this this is very very subtle and likely to um fade out in time you might put a, another line kind of coming across there for like another imaginary tree or something like that a few little lines just um coming across it's so subtle especially in the background uh we've also got uh, a question a comment from philip and uh thank you philip for coming along good to see you philip philip says i have a hard time getting my tone accurate throughout my trees look much too dark in comparison to the rest yeah it's uh it's tricky tone is tone is very tricky and just like estimating exactly um how to go in because in watercolors especially it's 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 uh it's quite annoying at times when you put in a color it doesn't dry like that it it it, it dries a slightly lighter color um it dries duller and depending on how wet the paper is the the shape that you put in may end up a different shape and probably the the main tip that i have with 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 tone philip is to is to look at a reference photo and to split that reference photo into three tones first tone is all the light tones so when we look at a scene like this we're looking at the yellows here in the background maybe a bit of this area here as well where it's kind of you know the these the softer tree leaves that are kind of it's touching the um touching that area of the of the sky those are your softer sort of tones and your lighter tones and then you're looking at your really dark tones which if we look here what are the darkest tones there's a few trees here not all of them probably this tree this tree maybe that tree and and not even the whole tree probably part of that tree only um and then you know in terms of the the, the middle tones everything that falls in between simplify that down to to uh to that mid-tone somewhere in between the darkest and the lightest tones which is this one kind of here and uh, some of the tr the leaves here on the ground some of these shadows here um you know they're not s particularly uh super dark sort of uh, the darkest tones so if you can do that that's really going to help you um yeah just basically identify where how how strong to go in um, another thing i'd suggest is to just try this scene with one color so if you've got yourself uh yeah if you've got yourself just some neutral tint don't even need neutral tint just mix up some grays you got yourself a gray or you've got an ultramarine usually a color that has um that can that has a, a wide tonal range when i say a color that has wide tonal range I mean a color that's that you can go very dark and very light if you dilute the paint out. Cerulean blue is a color that has a very low tonal range. 
you know even if you use a cerulean blue straight from the tube it's still going to be pretty light you can't get almost like almost a black color but if you go go even with a very dark green if you go with a uh, purple a, a dark brown um a, a dark blue those colors you're going to be able to get a large tonal range and if you try painting this scene with just that one color and and practicing the dilution levels you know adding you know you might say okay one part paint and then we're going to add three parts water and then this well here i'm going to add 50 percent paint 50 percent water and test them out on the on the paper and then you're going to see how they dry and after some time it will become second nature to you to just know how to predict when how it's going to dry what it's going to look like um and and essentially when to go when to go in when's the right time to go in okay so i hope that helps phil and like i am not so i'm certainly not an expert in i'm still certainly trying to to um, master this sense of tone because there is lots and lots of um with watercolors there's infinite there's an infinite uh amount of tone that you can get in here you can dilute this mix just marginally with a bit of water and that's going to change the tone very slightly as well but if you have the tone separated out into three main ones your lightest your darkest and the stuff in between just in like a, a general mid-tone you'll be able to get a very good sense of depth in your painting so i hope that helps you philip probably 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 went on a bit more than i should have but uh Right, righto. So you notice here, this has already started to dry, and um, I'm going over the top, and and look at that. It's you were getting a sharp edge. So compared to that mark, this mark has got a sharp and defined edge. Now sometimes this scares people because they think, oh, sticks out too much. But that's that's the point. We want it to kind of stick out a little bit because if it's too soft, how are we going to be able to tell? that this shape is in the foreground. So I'm using a bit of this um, Gothite color, a bit of, bit of brown and a bit of neutral tint in there. And I'm just dropping this in. And it, this is also a fantastic time to do this because this paper, surprisingly enough, is though it's pretty dry, it's not completely dry. So what happens is that we're gonna get little happy soft wet on wet kind of things happening and a uh, little bit of mixing hopefully into the paper so that it will create um a softer more uh kind of shape in areas and then a harder sort of shape in others okay so i'm just going through and i'm going to put some of these branches in Again, with a bit of that brown and a, and a little bit of that neutral tint. And we can redefine in areas. We don't have to keep that shape exactly. We can just go in. It's the great thing about branches. You just need to imply um, the shapes and keep on moving on. Okay. We know this tree is here in the front. It's going to be, there's going to be a high level of contrast. So that's a shape there all kind of in one color okay but you know at the same time you notice that i varied the tone very slightly in the tree one of the things one of the things that um i struggled with in the beginning was yeah just trying to yeah i'll paint everything in with one tone even the trees and stuff and you'll notice if you look at the tree there's like actually lighter parts in the tree there's darker parts so at times you're using you're still going pretty dark into that tree but at some points, I'm just adding a little bit of water here and there to mix it up, change it, change it slightly, okay? So coming up there, look, just a few little branches up the top there, coming up there, there, there. And, and some of this now starts to join onto the stuff here on the right-hand side as well, okay? Um, we've also got a bit of uh, thickness here on that top left-hand corner. And I think perhaps some... Um, color in there would be nice just a little bit of neutral tint or something again just to create that silhouette like effect okay in in um in some of in the edges okay, and this could indicate some leaves or something yeah of this of this tree 
and we've got this all wet and wet remember to cut around this little lamp as well because we're not gonna we're gonna leave that a bit there so i can get in some light so very very light marks um surrounding the branches but we're not but be careful not to eliminate the detail on the branches okay the sharpness of that okay uh, i'm just trying to just darken off in the edges there to create a silhouette like effect and then um draw more attention to this area this focal point here in the middle okay so some of this stuff yeah like it's just touch and go touch and go um the scratchier it is honestly the the better okay a little bit there this i don't know what this this is kind of dried a bit funny and it looks kind of like a sun or something here in the distance but it's not really meant to be that way um some more of this geoth uh geothite or whatever i'm dropping that in here uh and then i'm also may pick up a little bit of orange and just drop that in as well just to increase that level of contrast a bit uh, uh sorry vibrancy in there a little bit coming down here we've got again just this section of uh you know connecting it onto the tree there like that and then the, the tree sort of starts off maybe here or something yeah and then on the ground you know look a little bit of dry brush Okay, little, little bits of dry brush using the, the side of the brush like that. Okay, but we're joining this on creating a bit of this darker shape here. Um, I will need more darks in this region as well. It's not, not dark enough like that. Okay, uh, there, there. You notice as well in some of these trees, these little branches have just melted around into the distance a bit so we can re we can bring them out a little bit we can just use a bit of this rigor um if you've got a rigor just to bring out a bit of this detail here like um i don't want to overdo it but just some little scratchy bits like that there okay there something like that to just create a bit more interest in here um and, and remember don't don't worry about joining things up as well let it let it um, mix and and uh do its own thing there you know a bit of this bit of this uh, fan brush as well and we can get in some more bits on the ground and indications of these leaves you know i can put a bit more orange in there so this orange is now creating um some more you know the indication of these these foliage areas and we can actually see in the photograph this you know there's so much there's so many of these little leaves and things here. And we're not going to sit here and paint them all. So this is the only way that we can do it quite quickly. Um, all in one go, let the brush skip over the paper in areas. Um, you know, also get a, a little tissue at times and I'll pick up bits and pieces like that. Um, so we'll go across this side and I'm going to get the rest of this in pretty quick. And um, yeah, normally I'll, I'll go a little bit slower, but uh i just want to get through with this so here we go we're going to put in this tree it's here it's going up here um and hopefully we should be finished in about i'm anticipating roughly roughly 10 minutes uh so you know this tree's coming in from the side i might might actually put in a larger tree shape here and, and look at that i like this i like this um what do you call it I like this very dark sort of shape here and then having it a skip a bit like that. So we've got some wet on dry kind of effects like that. And then this will just kind of perhaps disappear out the scene. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, reassess later to see what I want to do with that. Um, like that, okay. There's another tree, it ends potentially about there. Uh, what else do we have? I know I've drawn another one here a bit and so you can go in there and just again pick up that dark color um, Just a brown color really bring that up here and here Okay, like this and uh, you Notice there's all kinds of stuff going on in here. There's even little branches and stuff so you can certainly take your time and draw out some figures and connecting shapes and stuff like that through here it's a row of trees remember so it's not certainly um you know it's not the most you know it's not the most exact sort of shape that you'll be doing this is the way i do it i sort of let 
a bit of white show through, kind of look like it's catching the light a little bit, and then we'll try here. You know, that's another one. A bit of brown and a bit of that neutral tint. And we want, like I was saying before, that kind of interconnected shape of the, the, the branches coming over. And it's good because some of this hasn't dried completely yet. And you can already see now there's the, the shape of these trees, and it's kind of creating a bit of a silhouette-like effect considering we've darkened around the edges as well. Okay, some more dry brush in here, connect up some of those shapes and, and again, um, exaggerate that silhouette effect. But be careful that we're not eliminating all the details for these branches. We need sharpness in areas of, the, of, of this, otherwise it's gonna all blend and look like nothing. So uh, it takes time. If you haven't, if you don't get it by the end of this session, um, don't feel like you're falling behind or something like that. It's taken a really long time to get to this point where I feel, generally speaking, I, I know how something will turn out um, after after uh, I put the paint on. And, I, and, you know, and you know what? I'm always surprised still. Certainly always surprised. It always just does stuff that I'm not expecting, which is a blessing and also a curse. So... One of those is the nature of watercolors. It's why, um, you know, it's why we do it. It's it's not a exact sort of thing here, but you can certainly predict um, a few little artifacts and that sort of thing. You know, here I'm just you know, tiny detail, tiny bit of detailing like that, and maybe a few little bits like this here. This can be like another um, branch or something that's moving up there. Oops, it's a bit too much there um look at that just some little bits of branches now coming over and moving over towards that left hand side okay coming over like this um how is it looking it's looking okay uh, probably in the ground region what i what i want to do as well is just add a little bit more textures and stuff in the ground so a um, little bit of brown a little bit of orange let's mix some of that up and let's Fan, and with the fan brush, a little bit of this here in the in the ground to create some little textures and um, impressions of leaves and stuff like that here on the ground. Okay, and you know the interesting thing as well is that creating a bit of an edge for the path is uh, you know so we can put a bit more darker sort of you know these leaves or little shrubs and things like that near the path. Will help to kind of draw out that path more that um the edges i'll just darken some edges in here a little like that there a bit more a few little bits of shrubs and things here as well okay um fantastic uh it's not completely done yet because we, we, we still need to put in some of these lamps um, running through the scene. I'll probably just do it. I'm just going to go ahead and, and do it, add it in and, you know, we'll, we'll get some wet and red effects well. Okay, but let me know how you're doing. How are you traveling? Ryan, are you um, keeping up? Are you keeping up or are you needing a bit of help at the moment or are you you panicking? Um, I, I hope I've explained things well enough for you to be able to um, at least understand what I'm doing. Don't feel like you have to, um, I, I guess, execute on it exactly or because there's no way that you, especially if you're doing a sort of wet and wet scene for the first time, like this is no way that it's going to turn out in, um, the way you want it to uh, to begin with, but you're going to be able to certainly get in some... Uh, Bit of theory and a bit of learning here for, for everyone so what i'm doing here is a bit of scratching um, i'm using my fingernail um, and you can use if you don't want to use your hands you can use a credit card or like a bit of plastic or something and just scratch out some little uh, lighter bits in the tree and this just creates some interest in that area so just it's not this this uh, gigantic mass of uh of stuff here there's it, it sort of there is some uh, darkness and some light in that tree, that kind of thing, okay? So the stuff here with the trees in the background, you know, we don't have to really indicate too much of that. You can already see some of that. 
sort of going off into the distance. Okay. Um, we're almost done. We're just, we're, the last thing we want to do is put in some finishing touches. Okay. So again, like I said, with the fan brush, um, I use that pretty often to get in some of these little shrubs and little bits of inconsistencies here in the, in the foreground and, um, get in some of this stuff, you know, might even want to put in some green if you want in there as well. Okay. But, uh, just some darks and bits like this. Okay. Um, there let's put in some color. Now the figure is, uh, left some color here, just a bit of white there in that figure. I want to put in some kind of purple or some blue. I have a nice lavender color, which I think will go nice. A bit of cerulean blue or something like that will work well too. Um, so let's drop a bit of that in there. Okay, just a bit for the shirt or whatever, like that. And really quick figure. And uh, I'm going to put in the legs just underneath in a dark sort of color, just a bit of neutral tint there. Let it kind of blend in there and then the other leg that this maybe joining onto the body um now with the shadow we kind of had indicated a bit of that shadow before but like i said it kind of has softened itself off a bit so we can redo a bit of that just re-emphasize it slightly like that like i, I don't want to really um overdo it but i know it's important to have something here well, I, I want to I want to have something here anyway, so that we can indicate, um, yeah, just a little bit of, a bit of this detail for the figure leading you into the scene. Okay, the dog, there, so we can, um, we can put in a bit of, uh, oops, put in a little bit of color for that dog, um, as well, just a bit of a, a little bit of neutral tint, maybe a couple, just put the ears in like that, the body there legs there you go kind of looks like a dog like that um and then a bit of color for the head so i'm going to go perhaps with the i'm going to use that same sort of brownish neutral tint color and just get that in like this. okay just a quick indication it's kind of you put the hair sort of covering the entire back of the, of the head like that it looks like the figure's walking forwards which is what i'm trying to imply um you know, that kind of thing, you know, there's a few other things you can do, like try to put on like a bag or something, a little detailing, but I think that should do the trick. I don't want to overwork it. Um, and then we've got a figure here in the background and that's, this figure is going to be a little lighter because they're further back in the distance. So it'll just a light little wash color like this. And it's really a brown that I've used and get the head in there and then put in a couple of legs, like this. Okay. And then we've got a figure off in the distance. And uh, we've got a figure here in the foreground. Okay, those are the figures done. Now what we're gonna do is start putting in the lights, a few of these uh, lamps. And I like, I really like this idea of having a bit more light in this section. So I'm gonna just, just wet this section of the lamp, lift off the color, and I'll get it pretty, pretty sort of, pretty sort of white in that area. And let's put on a bit of, uh, I usually use a bit of this Naples yellow or something. Uh, maybe a, a, let's see, put a bit of yellow in there, a bit of brightness, this soft kind of yellow color. Um, I don't want it to overtake the entire scene, but um, just a little bit of that, that, and then dab it off, okay? A little bit of that yellow, and um, I'll leave that to kind of dry off a little bit. Another thing you can do around the edges of it, you can sort of scrub a little bit and be careful, um, can sort of stuff your brushes up a little bit if you do this too often. And around the edges of the lamp, you can scrub and lift, and this will create um, maybe a slightly slight halo effect. This takes a little more time than what I'm doing here, but you get the idea. It's just something that you can, that you can do. Uh, Soften a bit like that, play around with it there. And then, so we've got a bit of this soft light coming off that. Okay. Once you're happy with that, uh, basically just move on. Um, I'm going to pick up some neutral tint, a very dark neutral tint here. And I'd say we'll finish this off pretty quick as well. 
and we're going to put in firstly the little stem of the uh, of the lamp like this, and and coming down like that, and I'm bringing that all the way. Look at how dark that paint is as well. It's very very dark, and I'm trying to just dry brush this in as well. I I do find that that just a bit harsh, so. Um, we can skip a few areas and just drag that down so that it kind of comes in front somewhere here okay somewhere there and then it maybe just melts in the ground um, we do have a few more there's another one perhaps here okay so we can draw in an indication of this lamp post like this okay coming down and disappearing roughly there um, we might have another one here and this is where we also want to just yeah be very careful that it's not too dark off in the distance because um, as we go back into the background like i mentioned before the lines um I get yeah they just they just become softer and if you look at the lamps all the way in the back it's hard to see them they're just covered by the mist okay there we go so, I mean, that's pretty much about it. And of course, we've got to put in the top parts of some of these lamps. I'll do them real quickly, just a bit of this neutral tint, um, a bit of this brushwork, just a little indication like this. I'm going to get a, a really, really dry brush strokes as well. There we go, that's one. Got another one here. Got a smaller brush that's probably going to help there. And we've got one here. Okay, less sort of fiddling around is better. There's that, there's one there, like that. Okay, um, you might, because this one's close, you might want to indicate a bit of yellow in there like that. Not a huge deal, to be honest. There's already yellow in the background, so it kind of implies that. And then for this one in the front, I've left that a little bit because I know it's, you know, it's still wet and still ready to dry so but you know we can drop in some color in there outline some of the um details on the edges of the lamp as well and maybe a bit in here i probably if i were you i would probably just wait a little bit longer until later to get that one in um but some of this is okay around this time it's all pretty much um it's almost dried so you're going to be okay so look this is the um this is the gist of what i'm i'm doing and later on down you know off camera as well i'm going to probably go into this and draw out a few more details in the trees a bit more darkness in areas but apart from that um this is this is it just a little uh, a little practice sort of sketch i hope that's been been helpful um i'm gonna go on now and we'll do another scene we're gonna do a line and wash scene uh, let me know how you do let me know how you're you're doing in the chats there's been a few more chats um, Philip says, uh, great tips, uh, fantastic. And there's also from Pat Kennedy from Derry City Island. Awesome. Um, yeah, I don't think I've had any viewers from, from Ireland before, but, but welcome. And, um, how did you find my channel? Uh, but, but very, very good to have you here. I hope you're enjoying, hope you're enjoying the stream. Sandy um sandy russell's here as well says hi darren from minnesota tonight usually florida but visiting my daughter in the snowy northern Brr. well um you know like I, I don't know too much about i don't know too much about uh minnesota but i have watched you know i have watched a couple of like this show called fargo a long time ago which was based in in i think a town in, in minnesota and i i heard that um, people in Minnesota have an interesting, interesting sort of accent and culture. I was reading about Minnesota nice. Uh, yeah, that just was kind of interesting for me to to to, to look into. Apparently, uh, there's a higher proportion of Northern European descendants living in in Minnesota. I don't know. This is just what I this is just what I read. But um, yeah. Anyway uh let's have a look we've got uh yvette paul says love awesome uh look this is a this is a pretty simple sort of sort of painting and certainly it by you know by all means it isn't it's not like a masterpiece or anything like that but um for for you to sort of practice some of these wet and wet effects and learn how to control 
um, your watercolors better, I think it's uh, it's certainly helpful. So I will give this a little dry off. I'm going to start on the next one, okay? Um, but if you have any questions and if you have any comments, I'd love to hear from you. Just leave them in the leave them in the chats. Okay, I've kind of dried that. I've dried that all off, and I've uh, set this aside. But that's what it, this is what it looks like. Okay, and uh, yeah, I think the 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 general technique that I've used there, if you especially if you work a little bit faster, um, if you're looking at creating some Christmas cards or some little scenes that you can paint uh, fairly quickly using most wet and wet watercolor techniques, and then a layer of these sharper shapes, you can certainly get in an impression of a lot of paintings. Um, that way. So I hope that was helpful. The Philip says, uh, let me have a look. A fit, if, uh, Yvette says, turn out great. We can practice. We can uh, practice this. Awesome, Yvette. Uh, Phil says, it's a, I think it's a masterpiece. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Um, I think I'm a little harsh on my work. So as, as we all are with, with artists, as artists. Um, but you know what I find? I always like to find something that I, um, that I enjoy, you know, that, that I appreciate in a, in a painting. Like, for example, with this one here that I did before. I like the left-hand side, but I think I stuffed this right-hand side. I just put too much in there, and I was just quite haphazard going in there without thinking too much right and all this stuff i kind of added in and made up um so sometimes it still pays off because at the end of the day like i like the composition of this and i, I might redo it again and think hey look i'm not going to make those poles as dark i'm going to i'm going to add more detail to the figures perhaps i'll make the ground more level um, might lower the horizon line a little bit so there's a few things you always learn and with the sketchbook that's the nature of it you know you're not there you know, if you end up with a masterpiece and people and people like it, that's that's just a bonus. Um, there's uh, also uh, let's there's a few more comments in here. Nikki is saying, um, I "Need to sell my prints on Etsy or something." <laughs> I haven't really tried to sell my work, Nikki. It's like I put it on, I put it on to Redbubble. Um, yeah, and for those of you who are artists looking to uh, know how to like you know just a, a quick entry level way to sell your work as prints uh, red bubble is a is a decent place to start off with um i probably recommend especially if you're concerned about the intellectual rights of your of your work just do it probably just do it yourself it's a lot more work um but when you put your work up on sites like red bubble uh where else society six and stuff like that they actually own the 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 right to to sell your work um this is it's, it's quite a it's quite a legal at funny sort of situation so look i i'm not for myself i'm not too concerned at this moment but i know like etsy is probably a better place like you were mentioning um Nikki to, to to sell because you're the one that actually owns the the work and especially if you're selling your own prints and printing them out yourself or going through another company to do it rather than a print on demand company uh philip says he does uh, check description thank you awesome philip um <laughs> yvonne says fargo is in north dakota minnesota 
is my home state. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching, that was the movie, Fargo was a movie by the Coen brothers back in the, I don't know how long ago, 90s? And then they created the TV series and I watched it. I don't really watch much TV, to be honest, but I found that to be such a witty, dark humor and uh, yeah, kind of the witty, dark humor, crime combination thing, which I like. So uh, yeah, interesting. I never knew you were from Fargo, uh, Yvonne. Tell me a little bit more about how it was like growing up there and the culture there as well. I love to hear about the culture of different places and how people interact with each other um, as well there. So there's a few more uh, chats I just like to acknowledge. There is Lily, L Lily Fuente, Fuentes. Um, really natural and beautiful. Greetings from Melbourne, Australia. It's morning now and I'm cooking, but trying to watch. Wow, um, that's, that's what I call multitasking, Lily. I, I sometimes do the same thing um, when I'm doing a bit of admin work or I'm like, uh, you know, admin work on, on the on the group and just approving posts and things like that. I'll put on a podcast or something. And you you kind of amaze sometimes at the stuff that you pick up and learn. Um sometimes it's all just a blur and 30 minutes goes by and you're like, oh what did I listen to? But then you remember a little snippet here and there. Um and you're welcome Lily and she's asking Lily's asking could I watch it later? Yes you can watch it later. All these are recorded and available after they're probably easier for you to find on youtube on facebook they are on the watercolor mentor page under the videos tab but sometimes they kind of get lost in there but um yeah you can try both um if you guys haven't checked out my youtube you uh have a look at that as well it's organized a little bit better i got playlists and probably more videos on there because i only started uploading to facebook a few months ago when i was streaming so yeah um fantastic uh i think that's pretty much um i think that's pretty much about it uh let's have a look there's also susan susan kane from central oregon there's also keith richardson keith richardson's asking is it line wash just now printing reference yes the second the second scene that we'll do i'll just pop it up on the screen here i mean yapping yapping too much we're going to do this one in line and wash okay in, with some pigment liners i'm going to grab some of these off the, the side and and um, let's aim to do this within an hour or, or less yeah i don't want to kind of hang around for, for for too long and uh, try to get in all the details of this so i'm gonna uh, we're gonna we're gonna work on getting in a kind of impression of the scene so a few more ends now these are some pigment liners i'm using a 0.5 a 0.8 a 0.1 liner i've also got these sort of these new liners which i really like they kind of have a flat edge flat edge um pigment liner isn't that interesting so um certainly certainly i've been trying to use these a bit more i, I thought they're a bit of a gimmick but if you look at some, one of my previous uh sketches this one here i've actually used that the that pigment liner to get in some of these details on the windows here with just four strokes for those windows. And, you know, because it's got a squarish sort of shape, it's really made quite a bit of definition here. And um, I'll try to use it on this one as well. Okay. So, uh, fantastic. Um, um, um. Let's, let's, give this a, let's, let's give this a crack, guys. Uh, just double check what, and there's been a few more questions as well. I'll just quickly, I'll just quickly um, acknowledge uh, some of the chats here on Facebook. Um, let's have a look. So Susan, I think I might have acknowledged you from, from Central Oregon. Thank you for joining, Susan. Um, Kim, Kim Norman says, I love tips on how to sketch more loose. I get too rigid. Right, I'll go through that here in this next one so that we... Yeah. Just going through my thoughts on how I sketch, so that might be easier to, to you to follow along rather than explain it now. I think explaining while doing probably going to make a bit more sense to you. Both the pencils pencils show through the watercolor a bit. Veronica asks, um, yes, the pencil will show through a little bit, but um, yeah, like I I tend to like that now. It actually creates a, a, a kind of like a bit of detail or a, 
yeah, like a, an edge on areas. But if you obviously don't want it to show through, I'd suggest using a pencil that has a smaller lead in it. This is a, I think this is like a 1.0 lead, like a one millimeter lead, but like a 0.5 or something like that. Um, certainly will create a smaller line and it's less visible. Let's see if you, if you draw lighter. Um, Alice says, I have a bad connection. Okay. I hope you can view this all right. Still available afterwards anyway. Alice Linda says, thank you for using the fan brush. Love the strokes, lines, and made in your painting. Yeah, the, the fan brush is such a uh, such a shortcut. Such a shortcut in, um, in getting in so much detail with just a few little marks. It's like having five little brushes and just getting five strokes obviously those strokes are going to go in the same direction but that's why i sort of i put one stroke in one way and then i'll sort of go up and down in different directions left and right and that will sort of create a bush like shape or something like that there a bit more a bit more uh variation in the strokes because you don't want all the same strokes all the way in your scene um and uh iman iman you said i love the pictures more uh without the black shadows uh uh, yeah, do you mean like do you mean like you you put you like it more without the shadows that I that I've added? Um or you like the uh I don't know what I'm trying to say, but yeah. Um I kind of liked it as well. Like when I started off just with like a few softer shadows running through the front. Um but you know what, you can always retry, do it with without shadows and see what it looks like. Um let's have a look. And uh, Linda says, shadows don't look as stark and dark now that you've added those tall and dark trees. Yeah, um, everything is in relation to each other. So when you're drawing, when you're painting, you know, it, when you've only got all the really light colors and then suddenly you go in with some uh, a slightly darker tone, that tone looks super dark. But that's because we haven't put the really dark uh, bits in. Different painters approach it in different ways. Some go for light, the lightest tone, and then they do the darkest tone, and they do the middle tones. Some painters actually start with the middle tones, and then they go their lights, their super lights, and their darks. So um, I don't think there's like a certain way to do it, but I, I'd certainly, with watercolors, start with the lighter tones because I find that's easier to get in a big wash in the background. And um, yeah. So uh, let's have a look. So, so James, uh, James Melton, there's a few here. James says, I joined in something that has helped me uh, to identify tones in my projects is a grayscale that I've made. I never thought about it using on reference photos. Yeah, um, grayscale is a, a great way to, to learn tone and to practice. Um, and Martha's fascinated with the fan brush. Margaret says, love what you've done, Darren. I want to take my time. I bought some new paper to try it on. I'll post it up when I'm done. We would love to see what you what you come up with, Margaret. And um love what you're showing for the layers. Uh, Mary Jones from Ontario. Mary's also asking what paper you're using. So I'm using 300 GSM uh, cotton, 100 percent cotton watercolor paper, which is 140 pounds for you guys in the States. It's the usual, usual uh, one that I that I use. Um, fantastic. Righto, so uh, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna get cracking on this one, and we're gonna start with the drawing, okay? And I'll bring up my reference picture. Just have that here on the side. Now the cool thing here is that we've got so many options of what to put in. We've got um, buildings running around everywhere. One thing, one thing though that I I really want to do is I want to get in a sense of shadow. Uh, running across this scene, a sense of light and dark. Um, because if we look at this scene, it's really like an overcast, overcast sort of day. There's no stark shadows in here. And I, I think um, with a lot of watercolors, having a strong light source really helps me painting in general. So I'm going to put this one in, and I'm thinking we'll get shadows running from the buildings to the left to the right hand side. And then that way, um, we can get maybe the shadows running over the middle, uh, over the top of the cars and stuff like that as well. So uh, these decisions are always best made at the start, just sort of thinking how you can improve the scene. And uh, I'm going to get started. Let me just move this over a little bit so I can kind of... Now, 0.5 pen, what we want to do is start putting in that general horizon line. So I'm going to put it in around about here, okay? Going across, it's about 
Um, actually, I'm going to put it a little bit, a little bit further, further down. Probably about a third of the way up would be better, just so that I can get these taller buildings in. Okay, a third of the way up. I, uh, you know, I've drawn that line in the wrong place, but it doesn't matter because once we get all the buildings in, you won't be able to see it. Okay. Um, the interesting thing as well is that we've got some of these um, crossing marks here in the ground, which we can put in later. I think they're a great little addition to a to a scene. Uh, but yeah, we'll go in, there's the, there's the, there's the vanishing point in the background. And then of course, you know, a, a very simple one point perspective where we've got a vanishing point here and then a few lines emanating from that vanishing point, um, going towards that vanishing point. I mean like this, and then a little bit like that. Okay. So we can get in a little bit of these detail running towards that vanishing point like this. Okay, this will help with our perspective and give it a sense of uh, depth already. Very simple, right? In terms of the lines you put in. Dot there, lines coming out from that dot. If you, if you don't want to draw freehand, grab a ruler and draw that in with the ruler. doesn't matter. Whatever gets the job done. Um, so this building here on the right, I really like... And uh, also some of these these figures as well, we can use uh, a bit of the, the way that they're facing and stuff. And they're all walking towards the right. And uh, one of the, the important things is to put in the figures first because what that will do is allow you to cut around and draw shapes in the background. So let's, you know, let me just, let's just experiment. We'll get this guy here in the front. Let's head, head of a person like that. And we got the, the, the sort of, um, shirt there okay there's the uh, the edge of the shirt then we got an arm there and then maybe coming out to the front like that there you got his kind of like a chest but on the back he's got this enormous backpack like that okay and now like this okay and uh, he's kind of just walking forwards so he's got one foot here like this and then the other foot's here and then sort of facing facing backwards it's not the best and the most accurate figure but we've got a figure there Okay, we might have another one here just walking. Okay, basic and the head. Notice the head is tilted to the left a little, and that creates a sense of um, direction, like they're walking in towards the left. The leg here coming towards the front, and then we've got another leg here uh, kind of going towards the back. Okay, that, and there we go. We've got a bit of a figure there, maybe an arm coming out here and an arm here as well. Uh, this person may be holding like a briefcase or something like this, just a square mark like that. You know, that could be a briefcase. It could be wearing like a, like a suit or something. So, you know, a little bit of that. Okay, a little bit of that, something going on in there. Um, let's have a look. We've got uh, a person here just sort of walking around and, uh, you know, kind of sideways profile like this. And... Um, legs coming down one towards the back like this and one front there like that uh, you know another thing you, you have to remember is that with the watercolors when we go over the top of it later it's going to look uh, you can still change the shape of these figures a, a little so they're not super accurate at this point always remember you can go through redo them a bit later the the, the trick here is just we want to get in some uh, figures a bit of life here in the foreground. Okay, the more the kind of a slant you put the heads as well, I find the more um, exaggerated it looks that their walks are. So I mean, here the head sort of slanted over to the right a little bit, and maybe this foot's forwards and this one's back, kind of walking forwards like this there, um, you know, into the scene or whatever. There, going through there, there's a person here in the background over overlapping and a leg just jutting out the front like that. Um, you know, just have a bit of have a bit of fun with this. Okay, maybe an arm coming across. These people are just walking across the road as well. Uh, another thing is that we want to put some cars in here as well. So. That's the horizon line there that I've drawn in. And, and the top of this taxi, you notice, kind of like finishes off about here. Comes down. And we've got the windscreen. This. And then it's just a square shape of the windscreen like that. And um, 
front of the car coming out here let's put in a, a bit of detail for the bottom of the car this and uh this from below the windscreen to the base of the car which is the bumper it's uh, more than the from here to the top of the car so i'm just trying to like measure it out basically a bit of measurements some of the lights or something here well um the air yeah, sides of the car this and then at the bottom just a simple couple of wheels at the base like that and that's all really that we need for that car okay um pretty basic pretty certainly pretty basic and you know, this also gives us an opportunity now to add in some more. There's another car here in the background. There is a wheel there, you know, a bit of the, the windscreen for that car. There might be another car here that's getting closer to the scene uh, like this. And we can get in a wheel here, okay, like that. And, um, you know, we can also start, we can put in another one here, for instance, just behind that car. Uh, I don't know something like this there another wheel there like that kind of lining up both of these cars forwards or what have you like that so there's a couple of box shaped sort of vehicles that, that you know we might even invent something here this could be a truck here in the background i'm just thinking what do they have in front they've got a uh I'm trying to think maybe a little window here at the front something like this okay that could be a truck there on the side, and I'll get in a bit of the side of that truck, this maybe. Um, let's have a look. We've got uh, some smaller cars, which we can put in there. You know, as we go into the distance as well, it's good to just use smaller, uh, like a smaller liner. It helps to add, just push that those shapes back. A lot of these overlapping shapes, they help. It's a busy New York kind of scene. There's sort of a lot of stuff going on people walking around, um, it's just busy as anything. And there's more figures here in the background as well. We can just scribble one in like that. There could be a figure here, you know, there, that kind of thing. The overlapping uh, sense of the shapes are really important though. So, you know, I'll put another one here, okay, there, and that one kind of overlaps with that, that figure there. And, um, you know, let's put in a, a foot, this, this figure may be uh, perhaps a little closer to the scene as well. Maybe the maybe this person's like walking in, walking into the scene like that. Okay, that, that. Um, and there's an arm. Here's another arm. Um, maybe a bit of hair facing. Maybe just hair on the back of the head. Back. Uh, there's just a few bits and pieces that you might want to add on. Here's another figure, kind of more stylized, more notice how loose the, the lines are for these as well. They're getting a bit more, a bit more full on. Here's another one here. You overlap them and let them draw, you know, this person might be on the phone or something. You know? What are they doing? What's that there? Uh, another person here. Uh, here in the distance and just maybe walking away over there you know the overlapping figures were super important just to get in a sense of this uh, scene uh, i'm still unsure whether i want to put in the uh, what do you call it the these little traffic um what do you call them the pedestrian crossing uh yeah I, I i think i might leave it i actually might leave it at this at this point i'll decide i'll decide a bit later but um i i think having some of these shadows because we're you know we're deciding one of the shadows to run to this to the right hand side i think it would just look a bit more simple if i do it this way and i'll uh, prefer it this way so we've got all these cars we've got all this stuff going on now we've got this section here it kind of runs in like that that's the side of the road um that because we've drawn in a little perspective line and then we have a perspective line here running towards the vanishing point as well and this can be the side of this uh, side of the road and then here we can begin to yes put in the building so 
This one runs around about halfway up like this. And then the side of the building finishes off about here. So we can draw a line from here roughly to, where is it, here? Okay, that's the side of the building. And then we're going to go and get in this little thing like that there. There's a underneath part like this there, just running underneath the building. And um, let's have a look. What else do we have? What else do we have in here? It's really just uh, shops and, um, yeah, just basically shops in this whole sort of scene. So some of this, this little section on top like that as well, which has some of these little vertical, not vertical, but these uh, marks just running across like that. Um, underneath, we might have more shapes. You know, here there's like a, uh, just a squarish sort of shape, the side of a, a shop or something like that, that runs down like this. Um, we've got another squarish shape in here. There's a doorway um, a running in here. So there's a few, certainly a few little things that we can um, put in here. What else do we have? We've got uh, more sort of shapes. You know, that's a little shape there. Another rectangular shape here um like that a lot of this stuff as well is going to be um quite dark um in here there's also you know i'm just looking at where i can find shapes rectangles objects that i can exaggerate and bring out and here there's a section another another bit there but all this is just a lot of it's just darkness just remember to leave in some of these little these little uh, lines and stuff here there so that's a bit of that the building here on that right hand side now the building here just behind um well, actually this goes all the way up it's kind of starts here and then it goes disappears off the disappears off okay and we can use the marker actually to get in some windows or something just drawing some of these lines like this indicate out where I want a few windows and stuff up the top like that. Uh, but then we've got a, you know, a, a building here. Okay. Which kind of hits this one. And this is the side of that building like this. Then it runs into the scene here like that. Okay. And that comes down like this. Okay. Fantastic. Um, and we've got windows on this building as well. One here, we've got a few windows here on the side of that building. There's a window here, there's a window here. Um, again, not doing too much work in terms of like defining, but just simplifying shapes. We've got uh, another building here in the background. Um, again, it's kind of like further back in the background. So I'm using a, in a pen, hopefully to push that back. It's actually part of the same building. I didn't realize, but it is part of the same building. And um, it's just a different color of that building. I thought it was another one. Yeah, same building. Uh, so we'll bring that up. Let's just make that the, we'll just make that the building. How about that? We can put in some more of these little windows. I like these windows like that. And I'll show you how to get in using a marker later, getting some of those shapes on the windows. Okay, so that's some of that. We've got another building here that kind of comes in front and it's like, it just juts out like this, comes down, hits the ground. And then we've got an edge of that building like this. Um, you know, some of you guys will probably know names of these buildings or what they actually are. I have no clue, but um, you know, um, it's a certainly a pretty, a uh, pretty daunting scene to look like to draw when you're beginning, but you, you know, I hope this is sort of helping you out. If you're not explaining it well enough, you do do let me know. Um, in terms of how I relate to buildings as simply shapes, I think that's the the way that um, keeps me sane. Otherwise, I'm just sitting there thinking, how the heck am I going to get in all these shapes? Because it just looks too difficult so much in here right the buildings begin to get really tiny as we get out to the back like this so you know some of this stuff here is just you see just little bits of work and you'll notice that the buildings uh, here in the distance 
Now they also have a little details and things on the ground too. Um, what else do we have? We certainly have another building that's up here that kind of comes up and then it just disappears behind. That one on the right, um, you put in a few darker marks in there. There's this bigger building and then there is, uh, look, I mean, it's all just the same. You can just simplify this down. Here's another one. Yeah, oops, here. And then we can get in the side of that building like that. Yeah, simplify down. And we have a larger building that then comes all the way up, disappears out of the scene. Okay, and of course we are now in the center, roughly the center part of the page. And we can now do the left side, same deal, same deal here. I'm going to start in the foreground to make things easier for myself. Start here in the foreground and um, let's estimate. Now these two buildings, these gigantic buildings take up most of this space, uh, about two thirds of what we're going to draw. I might just indicate a, the building coming up like here, but I can start with this one here. First, um, the base of the building kind of kind of starts around about here. Okay, let me have a look. Kind of starts roughly around here, and then we've got a little opening, a door or something like that uh, here. Just a very large opening coming down there. Um, there, oops. There we go. That's generally okay. And across like this here. Um, carry this down a little bit there i'm going to bring this all the way up this is going to disappear off paper okay that's this big building here on the left that we're trying to get in okay here's another bunch of lines that are just um, segmenting this building and cutting in front of that door the base of the door as well we're going to get in the base of the building roughly roughly there and we've got the footpath which is about uh uh, around about here, I think now this figure here in the background is too big. We're going to have to do something about that figure, reduce them down a little bit. Well, of course, I can change the footpath location to be around about here. So um, oft sometimes you notice things like that and then you, you realize you actually have to change it up. Um, but I don't think that it's too noticeable. Certainly we can wing it and fix it up in a moment. Um, okay. It had, I thought I had like a line or something like that on the page. I did. Just a, a more of this, these directional lines. Need some of these to help me picture the perspective of this scene um, better. Okay. Little perspective lines. Probably not really visible later when you finish the, the drawing, but uh, they, they help kind of like as a drafting technique to just draw some of these things in these shapes in as well so something like this you have a heap of courses uh, up on my website and on patreon which uh yeah basically urban sketching stuff that i go through lots of videos that i've put in there if you're interested in learning a bit more um you can check that out and uh, yeah if you want to support me as well you can sign up sign up and try it out um you know you don't need any sign up for a month and if you like it you can hang on and uh keep uploading on there if you don't like it then um yeah no pressure as well just sort off but there's some material on there which uh, may be useful to some of you guys and uh, now i'm just trying to get in again the perspective here of these buildings coming in like this okay it's not exact honestly it's not it's not certainly exact and with this building as well, it's actually taller. I mean, the door kind of comes up around about here, probably more. But I've, um, yeah, I've, I've, I've certainly uh, increased the size of this building more. And, and because of the horizon line, I've dropped the horizon line a little bit as well. This is going to change the location of this building. Uh, so we're going to carry on. Let's get in this building here to the right-hand side. It comes down like this. And then, of course... We have some of these windows, like just squares, just like this, just little squares there, there. Um, and down the side like that. Um, we've even got poles and things, but I'll add the poles in later, yeah, because I don't want to, I don't want to get too, too bogged down in, in all the little details just yet. 
probably might think I'm already getting bogged down in details. Some of this stuff I'm drawing here. So there's the side of that building. And again, I'm going to start drawing some of these little perspective lines running towards that um, the side of that building like that. Now, this area of light that I have coming in, I'm, so, I'm going to get this light shape running across the ground, covering some of the figures, perhaps covering some of the cars, but leaving some of it exposed as well. I think that would be nice. Um, this truck almost looks a bit like a building, but we would be okay. And have that still looks sort of like a truck. Um, so these two buildings are probably the, the biggest ones to have in here. And, you know, the, it, there are little shapes here, like, for example, this section here, which is just like a kind of like a front of the of the building, um, like that, kind of like an entry uh, point or what you do there. So, um, yeah, a few more figures here, keep things interesting. Um, like I said, this figure here may be a little big, but hey, I don't think we can really notice, yeah? I mean, in this entire scheme of things, it's not too, uh, it's not too obvious. And, uh, you know, I'm going to swap over. I'm going to show you some of these, like, let me show you some of these other pins that I got. And they are uh, sent to me from Etcher. There's a, there's a uh, little, the little uh, thing in the description. First time customer will give you 10% off. I use this, see, look, we can get in, for example, this quote of this person here. And just quickly follow that in like that. And there we have it. We've got a little bit of contrast there. And this person here, you know, with the legs, um, one leg coming forwards, and then you might have a leg coming back. I can just sort of draw that in like this there. Add in a little bit of context, a little bit of detail in here, and maybe a bit on the shirt like that. Um, you know, a bit of darkness underneath this car as well, like this, um, you know, tiny bit of that. But, you know, don't worry too much about all the darks just yet. This is some of it I just like to add in um, to kind of help me picture how the scene's going to look like. And I do like this stylized um, darkness in areas of it as well. It's, uh, but certainly it's it's something that you can do later with the actual watercolors itself. Oop. Ken's jumping around. It's alive. Uh, so <laughs> let's go on. Um, getting too excited. Getting very too excited. That's some of this stuff here. We're going to have some darkness in here. Okay, a bit, bit of darkness in there. Like I was saying, this area underneath here is going to be pretty... Yeah, we're, we're certainly going to have some dark points. There, a bit of darkness there. There's a, you know, maybe a bit underneath here as well. Okay, uh, but I don't. I'm very careful as well that I don't do it all now and leave some of it for the watercolors. Um, but this is going to help to get in. See the figures, cutting around the heads of the figures, and drawing out some little details. Okay, little bits of details. Slightly more stylized um, bits and pieces, yeah? Um, you know, what happens? What happens if I draw a figure using this pen? Okay. Probably nothing. Probably looks fine. But I got a figure here. Oops. Too much scribbly sort of stuff going on. Uh, perhaps a figure here, walking into the scene. A bit more stylized and uh, exaggerated, squiggly sort of lines. Walking into the scene. Yeah, I've figured out I can put one in here. Let's draw, let's put a bit of darkness around that figure. And bang, they've come out. So uh, that's a little thing you can do. A little bit of darkness in between these signs as well, underneath the areas um, of contrast. You know, this could be some doorway, these two areas that could be a doorway in there. So again, you don't you want to leave whatever you leave out, whether you're doing in watercolors or or, or in pencils, drawing in pencils, sometimes. The stuff that you leave out is, uh, is, well, not sometimes, but it's just as important as the stuff that you leave in, okay? Um, I can really go on forever just drawing this, drawing this, um, drawing this in, but, uh, you know, you kind of get the idea. I hope this um, helps out a little bit, yeah? You're doing this on site as well. It's great fun, and um, certainly something I'd really recommend if none of you have 
front of you. But if some of you would like to do some urban sketching, and it's, it's something I'd really recommend. It teaches you so much. It teaches you um, how to, to sketch quickly, get an impression of a scene. And these are just some windows that I thought I'd put in like this there. That side, you've also got some windows here. Uh, this is just made up stuff. That these windows are not really, they don't really look like this. You know, they're, they're, these, are, these are enormous office buildings and there's just windows everywhere, but sort of little areas like this are gonna help to um, create a sense of uh, detail and um, sense of detail and uh, uh, yeah, just create these windows in there like that. Okay, you know, here's that figure as well. In here, I'm not going to go into the background because the shirt of this figure is dark. If I go into the background, we're going to get too much uh, darkness in there. Though I will maybe add some darkness for this person there. Really up to you. Really up to you. You know, coloring bits, pieces of some figures in this one here. I might add in a bit of darkness for the legs. Okay, a little bit like that. Yeah, a little bit of. A little bit of darkness for the windows and areas like that helps to get in some of that detail. Now I'm following these perspective lines that I'm that I've been drawing. So those little lines like that they'd certainly help to yeah imply some decent perspective in here. This this doorway as well it kind of bugs me. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna color it in and hope for the best later. Something like this, okay? Cut around that figure a little bit, reduce the size of that figure. There. Dropping everything on the ground. Dropping everything on the ground. How are we all doing? How are we all doing? Um, hope it's, hope you're keeping up okay. Um, and then uh, you just let me know. Let me know if you do need me to explain a bit more as well. Always happy to go over things another time. Um, if it doesn't make sense or you need me to go over what I'm doing in more detail. Lines. These are the grill. See the grills of these cars? They just have a little, little uh, line there. Look at that. A couple of lines. Don't overdo it. Ooh. Section under here as well. There we go. Plastic a little bit underneath the windscreen. Plastic. Um. Right. Okay. And uh, now we've got, of course, this last remaining bit of the buildings and things. Because I kind of, you know, we've gotten really into just doing some of these little marks and stuff like that here, right? But. Um, the buildings here in the background that we just need to do those to kind of complete the scene and, and mix mix everything up together. But you know, a few more. I'm going to just use this pen. Look, it makes it a lot easier to use this pen to get in the windows um, quicker. Certainly a lot quicker. Um, but I don't want to rely on it too much and also uh, create the sense of um, the sameness and everything as well. So we got to be careful. We got to change things up here at the bottom I put in some more shapes you know here's a circle I don't think that circle is really there but I'm just going to put it in there anyway and here's a bit of darkness around that one change it around a bit so bits of interest to um, again create contrast and um, you know that could be the entrance or something you know there we go a bit of darkness there as well in the front of that building like that so Let's go in and, and start putting in another building here in front like that. And around this time is when I, I suggest swapping over again to a smaller, smaller nib. If you've got one, if you don't have one, just use what you're using. Um, but a smaller nib can help, can help to get in um, obviously the small buildings. And then we can push them back into the distance more. And this here was that horizon line that I'd added in um, at the wrong point before. And you can't, you can barely notice that. It looks like nothing. You can't see that. So don't stress if you are drawing with the pen and it doesn't go where you want it to go. Um, 
just carry on and do what you were doing before and um, change the direction of that line or just go over it once and and you'll be fine so don't don't um, get too hung up over things like that I've made about a thousand mistakes so far and I'm probably going to make a thousand more by the end of this uh, by the time I finish this stream Mary Jones, she says, notice you don't draw straight lines for the buildings. Why? Um, it's just a stylized thing that I that I do. Uh, I don't know. It's for me. It's like a kind of at an interrupt kind of thing. Where I also I feel like if I draw all the lines super super straight, um, what's going to happen is then if I have any lines that fall out of that order. And they, you know, I miss a bit, a thing here or there. It's just going to stick out more. So, yeah, I sort of just draw the lines like that to give almost the scene a bit of an impressionistic, slightly, just like a bit of movement going through, um, through the scene and helping it kind of blend together a bit. It's just a stylized thing. Um, but I do have drawings, other drawings which I've done, um, you know, very more accurately in terms of just having. Uh, yeah, like straight lines. So it comes it comes down to your personal choice. I also find sometimes drawing a straight line, say if I drew a line from here, let's from here downwards all the way to the ground, takes a lot more time. Whereas if you draw it in three parts, one sort of like I did here, I did line to here to here, and here to here, and here to here, it's um, just a lot easier. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question, Mary. Again, it's a, it's just a, just a stylized sort of choice that I that I end up choosing. Um, so we're pretty much done with this drawing. Um, I'm gonna put in a few little marks here or there, here and there. Um, I don't know if I have any, I don't know if I have any kind of examples of something that I've drawn that's a bit more. Um, the lines are straighter, perhaps in this one here. Let me have a look. I'll bring this up on the screen. Um, maybe some of these lines that are just running across the page like that, or the stairs. I've, I've put them in a little bit more neatly, but again, with one stroke, I haven't gone in there and tried to like change it up. Um, certainly try to change it up. I don't know if I can bring another. See if I can find something else. I have. I keep dropping my out of it this morning. Um but other examples show you the two different two different kind of styles. Um hmm. these days I tend to certainly these days I tend to draw and paint a lot looser than I used to. So uh yeah this one maybe uh, but they're still they're straight but as you can see they're not a hundred percent straight they're just one line marks at times um that one there maybe but i'm still doing the same effect where i will draw that line and then i'll skip a point go stop skip a point go um kind of sometimes can create the impression of um of it just how you know bits of wood finishes off and it stops a little spurs in the wood or something like that um yeah but i do tend to have this sort of style in a lot of my my work actually but i don't think i can really find not any recent stuff anyway um recent stuff i try to finish off pretty quickly sitting so um, let's get back to it and let's get cracking onto this last, um, these last little buildings here in the background and, um, times it's 1230. So hopefully half an hour time, we should be done or less than that. Yeah. Less than that. So I'm using this pen just to draw a few little window marks, uh, for the, for the windows there. Um, you know, I might have a darker shape here. This could indicate some of the tree or that kind of thing there. And remember, we're not trying to draw everything in as well. We want to leave some for the watercolors. It is line and wash. So um, the watercolors 
when they come in at the end, will create a bit more interest and uh, we'll get the shadows and stuff like that too. So I think that should be okay for the drawing. Um, the only other thing I could suggest if you uh, are thinking of putting it in is things like the lampposts and that sort of stuff. So um, <clears throat> one here that goes up pretty high past the door. Um, Oops, the door actually goes up higher, but I haven't got that in exactly. This comes down here. This is just a little hole. And it, it really, if you, you would have to look pretty close to see that this is a lamppost or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Um, there, there. Um, oh, uh, Yvette says, adds character when lines are not straight, I think. Yeah, it, it's sort of... Um, I, I prefer it. I prefer it. And, it. and it means like, you know, if I've got one line that's out of place, it's not going to look out of place in comparison to the whole scene. Whereas if I do everything really, really straight and accurate, then if I've got a squiggly line here, you're suddenly going to be drawn to that because it's out of place. We tend to pick things that are out of place or contrasting from each other. That's why when you've got lights and darks and things, you contrast them, the eye goes to those points. Um, a few little... A chat as well. Linda says, I don't think making straight lines adds to the warmth and naturalness of the sketch. It helps add um it helps add realism. Yeah, so definitely um that's that's another if you want to get a, a a more realistic rather than a stylized um impressionistic uh view of a landscape, certainly um focus on on trying to get those lines straighter if that's your if that's your aim it just depends on your on, on what type of scene you want to portray loretta sampson from uh scaposi scaposi oregon nice to nice to have you here loretta again um cool and uh and uh philip's nice some nice words from philip as as well in the chats um talking up my he's talking up my um my cityscapes <laughs> uh, appreciate it, philip um okay 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 let's let's uh let's um you, you know let's let's just draw in a few more of these little lamp posts and things okay and apart from that we can really begin what we were here to do, which is to paint, um, but certainly the drawing is going to help you as well. You're going to get in a lot of um, value in terms of um, understanding how to compose something, and that uh, you know it also builds the steadiness um, in your hand when you're drawing, uh, so when you're painting with your paintbrush, um, you know, smaller, more detailed shapes. So, what do people avoid? Drawing and I used to certainly when I'm when I'm doing watercolors I don't really enjoy um, drawing in, in pencil for too long um, but I do love I do really like drawing in pen I don't know why um, it's the same thing really except it's just uh, you know smaller uh, more permanent sort of marks on the paper but um, yeah. Right oh we are just about done. Um, but okay, I'm quite happy uh, with this. And um, so let's do this. Let's do this. And I'll start off with basic color. I'm going to go in with a large brush, and let's have a look at the scene. Now I do notice that the scene is yeah, there's it's, it, there's a lot of grays and stuff in here. It's an overcast sort of day. Again, I want to change this up to make it something of my own. And I'm going to grab some of this orangey yellow color, drop that in here. Yeah, we just want to get in like all the, well, for me anyway, I just, I want to get in a lot of these warmer colors on the building. Remember, we've got the light that's coming from this side to this side. So we're going to have to, um, yeah, we're certainly going to have to get in light on this side of the building, which is going to be you know, this warmer color because I, I don't want to have it, I don't want to really have it with a overcast sort of um, situation over the entire landscape. So a bit like that there. Um, let's put in, you know, a bit of, 
other color down the bottom. Um, some of these little signs and stuff, this is a good opportunity to pick up other colors and drop that in. This could be some uh, lavender. This could be some cerulean blue in here. This could be some other blue and stuff in here as well. You know, we can put in a bit of purple or something like that, just a cooler color. Um, and I'll join that on with that as well. There, it's a granulating purple color. Look at that. It's just like mixing all over the place. There, carry this down. Um, here, let's put in a bit more lavender, perhaps here, here. Okay. And uh, some more of this kind of warmth there as well. Some Somehow in the back of the buildings, I'm thinking, let's, why not let's put in some... A cooler color, maybe a bit of Payne's gray, a little bit of Payne's gray in some of these parts, just a light wash of Payne's gray in here as well. Um, that, that could be like just a bit of interruption to this warmth and, uh, all over over the scene. It could be like a, a shadow or something cast on the side of that building. I don't know. Um, something like that will help. Um, but when we go into the sky, of course, it's going to help us if we have. Um, a warm color running through there, but I'll get, you know, most of the buildings like that. You're just going to have a light wash of color over the top. It's too light, too dark in the back. Just lift off, lift off just in that sort of manner. And we can continue on down the page here. A bit of darkness there. A um, bit more darkness around here. A um, bit of blue here and here. Around the sides of the cars, you know, cutting around their heads of the figures like that. There. Uh, let's have a look and we want to blend as well. That's the important thing. But before we do, let's get some more warmth. Just drop in that warmth on this whole side of the paper here to the left. Okay, I'm using a pretty large brush. Brush It's a watercolor mop brush. Okay, and we can use some other yellows. Drop in some other yellows as well in here. Maybe even some orange too. It doesn't matter. And this is all we're going to go over the top of this anyhow. So it's not going to stay like this. Remember the shadows are running here left to right. But some of that there, at the base of the building, this is where I'm going to add in some more bits of kind of grayish color or some uh, bluish gray, blue gray, purplish kind of color from here. And also don't worry if you end up um, mixing up, mixing some of this into the, into the yellow. And um, what was I going to say again? Now don't worry if you're also leaving some whites on the page. Yeah, some of these white areas they they look fantastic later um, because they just create little bits of light or um, see just under there even I love that something like that there. And um, let's bring this wash down towards the ground. Um, now before I do though, I just want to get in a light wash for the sky. This is some cerulean blue that I'm going to pick up. Um, oh, I've accidentally put a some other color on that brush. It's uh, it's it's very easy when you're using cerulean blue. It's so easy to mix up a green there. So you just got to be pretty careful. Um, this is going to look like a kind of muted down blue. Okay, this there. I'm trying to think about the fewest brush strokes I can use. Get in that sky, and a bit of that the white there is fine too. Okay, look at that. That's it. That's the sky. And if it's too dark, go in and simply lift out areas and you can create things like little um, clouds, impressions of clouds. I'm using my large mop brush as well. And I like using this large mop brush because it creates a sense of um, larger shapes. It creates larger shapes and it stops me from being too obsessed with form and um, because we've got form there already remember we've got uh, the line work There's more than enough form the main thing we want with these watercolors is to get in shadow and um, tone and depth so you don't even you can even do this just in in watercolors if you're watching along at home and you don't really want to do line and wash try you want to just go straight to the watercolors just do that the same thing if you're going in with the watercolors it's just that you're going to have less form because the pencil is going to be lighter obviously and um but it's the same thing so come down 
kind of bit, I'm going to just bring this all the way down to the bottom of the page there. Almost done. A little bit of darkness here at the base. Got some Payne's Gray that I'm dropping in here as well, just a little bit like that. Um, I want to get in maybe a larger shape, larger shadow shape, a softer one just running across the ground here. Okay, just like this. I'm going to get that kind of moving across the scene there. Soft scene, uh, soft shadow shape like this. Okay, it's stylized, I know. Um, like that. Oops. Yeah. Probably more strength in there as well. When you're painting wet to wet, stuff just always tends to melt off and disappear if you not don't go strong enough. So um, I think that's okay. Okay, I think that should be fine. So we've got a bit of a shadow coming over to that right hand side. Um, we've got pretty much everything in here that we need to put in. Really, the, the last bits is just little bits of color for the figures. So let's have fun let's put in a bit of blue here a bit of blue here for that one well it's not blue it's kind of a violety color right there's a bit of purple uh, we're gonna go with uh, just a dark color for this one here okay just some color for the figures i mean you can even leave some of the shirts of these figures white as well so don't feel like you have to um you know get in color for all the figures like that one there for example you could leave the shirt white put in a little bit of darkness on the right hand side of that figure um what else? We got a bit of cerulean blue. This one here, just a bit of blue for that shirt. Then maybe some darkness around the the edges of the shirt as well. Indicate maybe a jacket or something. Kind of similar to that um, guy there. Uh, we've got maybe kind of like a, a white sort of uh, dulled down muted white color or gray color for that figure. There, um, bit of color there. Let's have a look at these cars now. I think a bit of a little bit of blue for the windscreens would be nice. So just a cool color like this. Okay, there's a bit running through like that for that one. Keep picking up, keep picking up some purple color by accident, but um, it doesn't matter. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of cool color anyway. There, this car, this car here. I'm gonna just put in. Let's put a bit of yellow. Maybe some. How about some red? A teeny bit of red as well. A bit more warmth in this one, just to change it up a bit. Okay. Like that, maybe some another car here out in the back there. Look at this there. Um, the heads of the figures. I'm going to put in a bit of a little bit of red to maybe uh, just draw out some the features. Red and a bit of uh, burnt sienna, you know, as well. You can use you can use that to create some flesh tones. Um, also a little bit of blue. You can have a bit of blue in there as well. Um, so it's up to you. Bit of carmine and a bit of burnt sienna that can work as well. Um, there we go. Just some heads and details on those figures. Okay, a lot of this is really starting to to come together and dry off now. So let's finish off this, and I'm going to dry it, do the final shadow, and we'll be finished in about 10, 10 minutes. But yeah, any questions? Uh, leave them in the chats. Okay, that's all dried off, and I'm having a look at some of the questions and the comments. Uh, Nolan saying, getting a little better off. Love doing grayscale monochrome and uh, adds characters. 
oh, sorry, I've already read that, but um, Philip says it looks alive. It does. The, the colors mixing together and moving and the, the, the sort of um, wet and wet effects, I love that part of it. It's exciting and you kind of, you're, you're almost fighting against time, but it's exciting. And uh, Kate says, Darren, I'm enjoying the class today. Awesome, Kate. And uh, always good to see you. Give, uh, give it a go every week. And it adds up. All the practice accumulates. It adds up. And before long, you look back at some of the stuff that you've been drawing and painting months ago, and you think, wow, I've really come a long way. So sometimes, well, not sometimes, it's always very difficult for us to look at our own progress um, day to day because we're so familiar with ourselves. It's like when someone doesn't see you for quite some time, they say, oh, you know, you've uh, changed your hair or, you know, you've um, been at the gym or something like that. Um, but you can't really see that. So it's the same thing with practice. Um, it's often hard because we paint every day, we see our, our results and long term, it can be difficult to identify that. So um let's have a look there he is you more um what am i up to lily uh lily's um said it's looking so good like your techniques darren awesome lily and lily's asking is that a hair dryer or is it a special dryer it's a special purple hair dryer lily so purple is uh, one of my favorite colors and uh yeah i don't know i got where did i get this from i think um I think I got it for about $10 from Kmart. <laughs> so uh, Kmart is like, a, yeah, it's kind of like a, well, like a Walmart or something, I suppose, over in the States for you guys. Um, yeah, it was like five or 10 bucks. So nothing special. I've never had any ill effects. <laughs> I've never had any ill effects of using the hairdryer on my watercolor work. Um, the only thing you gotta be wary of is if you've got pools of water, um, say this stuff is drying here, that's drying here, but it's like pooling, and then you dry it with the hair dryer. Um, it will at times just push the water over in different directions. So you've got to be careful with that. Um, because I'm when that happens, you see me grabbing the tissue and you know, frantically just trying to blot off some areas. So yeah, just be careful with that if you do have some of those areas. But it it, it saves so much time. Um because I'm not going to sit here and watch, literally watch the paint dry. But with that said, there are some times where when the paint dries itself, the effects are a little bit more subtle. Um, the paint disperses more evenly. But for the most part, um, if the paper's just, it's, it's half dried, you hair dry it, same thing. No big deal. Okie dokie. Um, Let's continue on, everyone, and let's and do the fun part. I like this part of the painting where we're just going in with shadows and darkness and really juicy, dark bits to draw out contrast. I'm going to be using two brushes, a number 10 round brush and a number 6 round brush to get in everything that we need for this last section. Um, and I'm going to have to invent some areas of shadows here because we haven't got them in the reference. So we want them to come from the left to right. And I do want them to come on a slight little angle as well. You see this shadow, it's kind of, it's not completely from left to right. It's kind of left to down, down, where is it? down to the right kind of thing. So it's just a slight little angle here on the ground. Just something that I decided to do. But we're going to make all the shadows. We have to make sure that when the shadows are running in that direction, they have to run that same direction is what I'm trying to say. So you kind of want shadow that's going up like this. This is some, it's a, it's a common mistake that you see beginners do where they, this is why I've also put in this big shadow here at the front. This is an indication for you guys so that you know all the shadows must run in that somewhat in that direction, yeah? Um, or at least just completely straight across like this, but a slight little angle downwards. You don't want a shadow to go upwards like this. You know, you don't want something like that. That's not gonna make sense. Um, or you don't want a shadow to go to the left, especially. Now, that's going to be really weird. If we have a shadow going to the left, then where's the light source coming from? So we need, we know there's only, you know, as far as I know, there's only one sun um, in our solar system. So we need to have, make sure that, you know, if we're picturing that light source here, all the shadows need to run in that direction to the right. So 
Um, if you can follow that, you'll be fine. Let's go ahead and I'm going to mix up some Payne's Gray, okay, which is a cooler color, a cooler dark color. Let's put in a little bit of Ultramarine in there as well. Um, if you don't have any of these colors, honestly, just mix up a dark color. Mix your primaries together to get a dark color. But I'm trying to get myself a purplish color uh, because, because uh, Lily's... You know, Lily's got me thinking about all these purples now in my hair dryer. So I've got to, you know, I've got to do, I've got to, I've got to add some purple in here to justify what I just said about it being one of my favorite colors, right? So um, let's go and do this. Uh, let's put a bit of color there. Too dark, way too dark, but that's okay. Dilute and continue. Um, and one of the things I like to do as well, we, we can just leave out some areas of light in here so that it's not all this gigantic kind of mass. And I s sort of shift the, the, the color around a little bit too, you know, here, you know, there's a bit there. And we have areas where we have yellow showing through like that, right? So just some little bits like that so that it's not all this mass of color and nothing, n none of that lovely yellow showing through. So another thing you can do, Use the edge of the brush like that. Sorry, not the edge, but the side of the brush. Um, and that will help you get in some of these dark tones, um, but also encourage the paint to skip over. Now, leave that edge there, and we're going to go here, because this is a kind of, you know, imagining a gap running through these buildings, right? So we go darker here, probably around the time where I'll, I'll use, start using a smaller brush as well, because this can get... I can get a bit um, too haphazard, get a bit too excited and suddenly get rid of the light. So some of that in there like that, um, there. Same thing here in this building. Notice there's a little edge there. We're gonna leave the light in, come down. So this little bit here, here, even that one. Uh, some of them, they're probably not gonna be as noticeable because they may still be in the dark. Um, but a little bit of this, uh, maybe a little bit in here, just darken that building down a little, like that. Sometimes these buildings will have like a shadow running through the building, like this. Maybe another building kind of cutting over them from the back end, like that. So a little bit of that coming on. Um, you know, this little bit of this little bit here could have like a shadow, like cutting across, like there. Here, a light sort of wash running across, like this, and this helps to join up still leave a bit of light up on the top okay um excellent so we're moving moving down the page okay and um getting down to the base of some of these areas and this is where we can have a bit of you know again create more contrast by darkening off as well further darkening off some of these areas especially around the figures um cutting around some of the figures is good and uh but remember as well, we do have an element of um, darkness and shadows running across the scene. So some of these figures are going to be covered completely. A lot of them are going to be covered completely anyway. Okay. There we go. A little bit of that color there. Um, very, very loose uh, shadow just running over the top. This one in the background. Hmm. I think, uh, yeah, I, I probably should have put in a bit more of an edge to that building, but um, I don't really do much about it now. I'll just leave that in there. We'll leave that in as just one big building there in the background. Um, okay, and we're going to start putting in, like, shadows and darkness on the areas of the, of the buildings on the ground now. So, for example, here we can get in a sharp sort of shadow running across like this. Whoops, that needs to be darker, like this. Okay, another one here, like this. Yep. Pretty frightening if you're doing this for the first time. Sometimes you, uh, you think, oh, geez. You got one go to, you essentially got one go to do this. Um, and the darkness of this shadow as well, I'm, it's about, 
I would say it's about a quarter, um, quarter to a half pigment to three quarters to half water. Okay, some of these figures are going to be obscured by some shadows. This one's too much. I wanted to leave some more blue on there. Look at that. There. Some of the cars as well, a bit of shadow. Let's imagine some kind of cutting across like this. This. Okay. A bit of that shadow just cutting across the car. And leave that some of the orange on there as well of the car. We don't have to get in all get rid of all that lovely shadow. Um there we go. And then the cars are gonna have shadows as well. We're gonna have little shadows running across the ground to the right here. Um bit of that. Okay. Um let's have a look. I think I might actually get in another shadow. I'm cutting across this one. Just having a look to see if that's gonna even be appropriate. Something like this that joins this onto this bigger shadow like that. I think that's better. Yes, like that. Because um there was just something funny that area there that just it just needed to bring go up and join with that big shadow shape. Now moving along to the stuff on the right, now we're gonna have some soft shadows there underneath there, underneath these buildings, a little bit of softness and darkness underneath here. Okay. Um a lot of you know some of this has already been aided with the pen, so you know we don't need to do a whole lot in here, but just put in some little dark areas in, in sections like underneath here, for example, that might be darker. Um, this uh, section here could be darker underneath. Okay, that on top is lighter this section because it's kind of exposed. The sun, um, a bit there, for example, a bit there, a bit here, a bit here. Um, you know, maybe a bit of shadow and stuff on the windows on the right hand side of the windows, like this. Not really, it's not much. Just a little dab here and there. Here on this building, I, I thought I'd maybe will create a little shadow. Because, you know, the, the light's hitting this edge of the building, and this bit may slightly be slightly in shadow. So let's let's try this, and this will bring out some of the details on that building. Um, but I'll soften a little bit here as well. I need to let it move over in there, maybe some here. Um, you know, at the base of these buildings, a little bit of darkness in here. Okay, so we've got certainly got a few um, bits and pieces going on in here, and you know that could be another dark bit there, another dark bit here. Okay, but we have an impression of all this light running across the scene, and then of course um, leaving a lot of that light on that right hand side. This one kind of bugs me. This building in the background bugs me a little bit because it's just too, I feel like it's just too bright. I will dull it down very, very slightly like this. So to help it, I just I don't want it to be too, yeah, you know, kind of thing. Um, fantastic. Um, now, what do we have left to do? Well, most of it's pretty much done. But the last thing is just the figures. And, um, you know, we can put in some of the legs. And I, I like to add in really like a lot of the darks here for the figures to really bring them out more. This could be a, you know, a figure walking. This could be a figure, you know, some legs here for this figure. Here, um, the figure kind of walking as well, kind of connecting up with the jacket. Um, kind of like this here. Um, fantastic. Mm. And uh, <laughs> Philip's laugh. Philip's laughing. Love the thumb smudge trick. I've seen you do it so much. Caught myself doing it now as well. <laughs> I don't even um. I never realize I'm doing it. Sometimes it's almost actually that came as like a bit of a panic thing when I was starting learning to paint, and then I would put I put some color in in the wrong place, and they'd be like, oh no, and I'd try to rub it out with my thumb. But now I've kind of mastered it. To, you know pick up pick up paint it's almost like a it's almost like a, a very non-absorbent soft uh, fleshy tissue uh, um 
Look, alrighty, uh, let's have a look. Uh, so a question from Lily. Lily says, I've added watercolor over line made with pens, but the ink and the watercolor has become very messy smudged. Okay, yeah, that, the main thing you gotta remember is when you're using, um, you know, using pens, just make sure that they are waterproof or uh, they'll say waterproof or permanent. Check on the side of the pen. They often say that specifications. These ones I got uh, from Etcher. And they, they gave these to me as a sample. Um, I thought they were a bit of a gimmick to, to start off with because obviously there's so many, there's 16 of them. Um, and the flat ones, I thought they were a bit, um, I thought they were a bit gimmicky, but I actually have used these so often now. Um, and these are my preferred, preferred pens. But I do use the uh, pigment, what do you call these? Uniball eye pens. Uniball eye pens. They're about two dollars, about two bucks. Um, but you can get a set of these uh, Etcher pens on their website. There's also a, if you check in the description, there is a, a coupon code there gets you 10% off. Use my coupon code. Um, so if you want to, if you want to support me or whatever. But this is like, a, they're, they're pretty good. 16 pens. I think. I think they cost about 40 to 50 bucks, which um, look, I think mean, it was like $2 something a pen. So that's pretty decent. And I've used them quite often, um, every week, at least three to five times. So um, very durable. And uh, look, I'm not, as, as to how long they last, the ink lasts them, I'm not sure, but I'll keep you all updated. I mean, for those of you watching, you, you'll see anyway. Um, hope that answers your question. James Milton says, love your version of the photo reference. My car looks like a go-kart. My car looks like a go-kart sized up to my people. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can uh, always increase the size of the cars as well. Like if it's a bit small, you remember you can use the pen and just kind of restate the lines. It's not going to look perfect. But with this sort of style, like I said, if you stuff something up or you make something too big or too small, um, because it's quite loose, you can keep continuing and, um, yeah, again, just, uh, restating things without it looking too out of place. So these figures I've really, I think I've just, I certainly have gone quite overboard with the with the legs, but we'll be okay, we'll be okay. We're gonna get the shadow in just like this, a little bit of a shadow on the ground um, for this one as well here. Um, here, just running towards that right hand side, I'm trying to get them to join up, the figures joining up with each other through the shadows as well. So you kind of do the legs like that, right? And then with and then um, you join the legs with the shadows here on the ground, and then just move back. They all follow that same direction, okay. And, and if you join them along, you get a few dark bits on here. You're fine. They look like people. Yeah, this can be a bag or something that the person's holding. And they have an arm. Maybe an arm coming out here or something. This person's here. This person might have the arm up. You know, here. I, I don't know what I'm trying to do here. But it's uh maybe there's a bag here. I've done the. Done the finger smudge thing again, Philip. So, um, you know, even with the legs here, now these legs are funny. I don't know what I've done here, but they just don't look too right. So we can try to restate, restate them a little bit. Okay, and that might look a little kind of better. I don't know, he's, it just, yeah, that looks a bit better. I don't know why I had that white bit coming all the way down before. And it just looks like a very tall person now. Um, have this sort of notice how I'm just touch and go, touch and go. This is magical. You get a line that's kind of half done. See how there's like a little bit here. You 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 want to leave some little spontaneous little skipping on the paper because that's going to imply a bit of light catching onto the um figure. Here, the the legs they look a bit funny. I thought they look a bit funny, but we can try to restate them a bit. Yeah, the watercolors and um. Just shape and shape them up a little bit like that. Again, the shadow. I'm gonna put that shadow in like this. Here. There. And there's a shadow here for that person there. Um if the shadows look a bit too much, we can also like soften soften up using a, a bit of a spray bottle. So just just spraying a bit of water on top of this, and maybe that will soften a little bit. And um we get a bit of mixing onto the ground, a bit of mess in areas like this, okay? But we do want sharpness in here as well because we've got a lot of um, wet and wet kind of work. Oops, too much water. We'll go back up, a bit more in there, a bit, of, bit more in here for this, these legs of these figures, here. 
kind of just standing around the middle of the road. And um, again, a bit of that shadow running towards that right-hand side, these figures. Um, but a figure here, and I'll join up the legs here and here. And this leg's kind of forwards, certainly a lot more forwards than the other one, like that. And then, um, you know, onto this little shadow here, like that. You know, I'm tempted to go into that shadow again, but I'm going to just leave it. Okay. Here's another one there, like that. And the, and the leg will restate these legs more, like this, one there, one here, like that. Here's one leg, another leg here, join that on, like that. Um, there's another figure, here's a couple more here, there, the background. Um, underneath the car, if you want to restate and add more darkness to the wheels and the shadow here underneath the car, do that as well. Okay, it all kind of just joins up. Okay. We're mostly done. Um, like, I, I, it's up to you now, like, it's really up to you in terms of how you want to stylize things. You want to put hair in the figures, do you want to... Uh, wait till it dries you want to go back into it later and add more detail into the buildings it's up to you yeah um but these are these are just the the uh, essentials the basics to get you started um and i really recommend you to try to make this your own try to find your own style and the way that you want to express this scene um this is the way i do it but you might you know like uh, someone in the comments was saying before they might prefer straight lines or they might prefer um different figures or something like that it's you know it's it's up to you and you've got to find what story you want to tell and what um what you might like to represent essentially in the way that you represent it represent it too um certainly i feel there needs to be for me maybe a little more darkness in some of these areas at the back um and we can also put in some birds here in the background little look at that just a few little things in the sky help to connect up the background up a little bit with the buildings um you know i've skipped over some detailing in some of the buildings too um which is okay um sometimes if you skip over those areas the eye will be drawn to more areas of detail like here so if that's what you wanted to focus on okay so that's a pretty simple urban ske uh, sketch scene um you know if you can draw this you can draw almost any any scene because there's all kinds of um details and stuff going on in here give it a try i mean just go out in the city go out to uh i don't know you could be out near the street or at the park or something give it a crack give it a try and see um if you can draw something on the spot you don't have to paint on the spot i usually just draw on the um on the spot and then see how it uh, works out whether it um yeah whether i can sort of get a a, a impression of that scene they bring out both of them now I, I do like the second one a little bit better just um, bring up that first one here on the left hand side. So, uh, yeah, I hope this was useful for you guys. Um, do you have any questions or do you have any comments? Um, love to hear what you think. What do you think of these as well? Um, and, and also, like, because I, I did get some requests to do, or yeah, requests uh, to do some flower scenes. Um, let me know if that's something you're interested in. Or if you have any other themes that you think that you, I don't know, that you might want to see me attempt to do. Um, because I'm always interested to try new scenes. Um, as much as it's helpful uh, for you guys, it's also very helpful for me because it sort of puts me out of my comfort zone. And I end up trying to, you know, we often do the same things, we paint the same things that we're comfortable with. But I think to sometimes to grow as artists or to find um, a new inspiration or, or something you you got to try new things and I, I'm you know I'm still happy about um, that I I'm still happy that I am able to um, step outside my comfort zone at times um, and surprise myself I think that ability to surprise myself is something that I'm so glad I still I still have um, just when you think you know everything about that you want to paint and all the subjects and what and the way you do it, sometimes you try something different and you're like, oh, I can't believe it. I actually, I actually like that. So, um, and Yvonne, Yvonne sends a coffee. Thank you so much, Yvonne, for the support. Um, I do have a Patreon, and Yvonne's a patron. Uh, Yvonne's a patron there. I've got a bunch of uh, courses on there. If you want to check that out. 
is um, have a look if you if you interested. I also sell them individually, so you can check them out. watercolormentor.com slash courses. Uh, otherwise, there's, there's tons of content here available for free. Um, uh, I do these every I do these every week, and um, I love doing them. It's 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 uh, in, initially it was quite tricky for me because I you know I'm new to streaming and stuff, got a bit nervous, and you know the fir probably the first few streams I thought I've forgotten how to draw and paint. I mean, I, I, you scroll back and look at maybe this first, second, third one. I thought they were pretty bad, but but um, certainly I've gotten a bit more comfortable, a lot more comfortable doing these. And it's all thanks to, to everyone's support and um, the feedback that, I, that I've gotten, whether it's, you know, um, constructive feedback or positive feedback, doesn't matter. Like anything I can do to improve, help you guys learn a bit better. I'm always keen to hear, you know, I don't take anything personally. Um, uh, just like you guys, I'm also trying to learn. So uh, having a look through... Uh, there's a few, just have a look at a few more chats. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, James, James, Greg James's comments about the go kart. Shinolan says, My husband is in awe of how you make your drawings look awesome when you finish a painting. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Shinolan. Um, some, sometimes I get a little bit, I, I get a little bit, um, worried when I look at my drawing and, I, and then I'm, I'm thinking, geez, how am I going to make this? You know, if, I, if if there's too many mistakes in my drawing, I think, geez, I'm gonna I'm gonna recover. But with the painting, you always remember once the once the shadows in, and um, just because you've drawn in the pen, the pen in doesn't mean you can't go over that with watercolors. Watercolors is a is a transparent medium, but when used quite thickly, as you can see, look at the amount of contrast you can get in there. I mean, it's almost the same as the 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 amount of um, opacity in in acrylics or oils, if you're using it quite um, dark like that, this neutral tint, there's nothing showing through. It's, you just gotta use that kind of sparing like that, like that, but let the natural beauty of the watercolors come out. This, uh, the, the light is so crucial here. Um, but thank you, thank you for that. And uh, Philip says, LOL, I saw, yeah, you, you saw me use the, uh, Thumb smudging technique. Now it's kind of evolved to all my fingers, as you can see. These are the the um, the smudging fingers, probably the middle finger and the thumb. That's the probably the closest to the brush. And the panic hit hit the uh, hit the panic button finger <laughs> in times. But then it looks yeah, yeah, there, and it looks looks quite alright. Yeah, it's kind of blended some of these some of that together. So. Uh... Doris, thank you, Doris. Thanks for coming along. Philip says, love them both. And thank you once again for doing a bang up job. Cheers, Phil. And I uh, appreciate you supporting me, coming along and watching. Um, I'm happy that, that you're painting. I would like to see some of your stuff, Philip. You know, join our group um, on Facebook. If you have Facebook, uh, well, what's it called? It's uh, facebook.com slash group slash watercolor mentor community. You can go check that out um, and post there. We'd love to see some of your work. And Community we got there, there's nearly a thousand people there now. We've got a bigger one that has about a hundred and something thousand, but it's less personalized. This one's just for these demonstrations and, you know, just for stuff that you guys want to share, paintings that you've done and um, get some feedback from everyone. It's a really nice, supportive community. And um, and and it, it means that you also get a bit of feedback from other people rather than myself. There's some experienced painters in there as well. So um, yeah, encourage you definitely encourage you to join and uh, use the resources available there. I learned almost everything I have from other people on just watching videos. I, you know, I've been to some. Uh, you know, I went to a Joseph Zubukovich um, little show once upon a time back in Perth. It was called the Big Paint Out. And it was about 50, 50 bucks, I think, at the time. And you just go there and there's a lot of artists trying to sell their work. And Joseph did a, a I think it did like, a, it must have been a volunteer sort of show or something there. And that um, that was amazing, really amazing to 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 watch. But uh, what, am I, what am I talking about? I forgot what I'm talking about again. But uh, thank you, Lily. Uh, thank you, Lily. Lily. Lily says, thanks for the session, Darren. I'll try to watch the whole thing. Yeah, do do give it a shot. Do give it a shot. Um, at least, you know, you, you, there's there's a couple of the different things you can try here. This will help you improve your wet and wet, um, get a bit more confident with your wet and wet work. Um, I do like this side of the painting, again, this left side, a lot more than the right-hand side. I reckon there should be a bit more detail and things like that in there. I could have 
um, implied some more uh, shapes in here as well in the background, maybe some larger shrubs as well. Um, but I do like some of see this work, there's some of this um, fan brush work, indicative stuff. It looks like there's more detail in there than there actually is. Cool. Uh, fantastic. And uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, Philip, another comment. Oh, there's, uh, let me there's a few more. There are uniballs in Australia. Uh, Lily says there are uniballs in Australia. Uh, what bread pants? I've added water. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, there are uniball pens in Australia. I thought the shadows were too dark, but um, from far away, it looks fine. Yeah, um, often close up your paintings, um, it, it, it's, it's weird. It's almost, you know, our eyes kind of have that same sort of contrast and adjusting sort of, uh, sort of, it's almost like a camera, right? You put the, the, the scene away from you and suddenly everything just sort of, comes together holistically and if you look at a small part of it like this um of course it's not gonna yeah you might see a figure here or there but the context of all the different tones in there gives meaning to some of the darks some of the lights you know without this dark tone here we wouldn't have the light here without shadow there isn't there's no light so um, there are many opposites and complementaries in 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 uh, many aspects of life, but in watercolors, I think um, I love that that uh, the parallels that I can draw from watercolors and and life. And um, you can't have the good without the bad, uh, the winters without the summers, all that kind of stuff. Same things with watercolors. You, you know, the 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 the, the light. Um, brings out the beauty in the darks the di darks brings out the beauty in the in the lights um the softness and the lack of complexity in the back um that looks beautiful and if you've got some complex uh, more refined shapes in the front having those uh, a balance of all those in there can help in a composition but then you can break the break all the rules as well and just have soft shapes everywhere it will still look still look um, quite nice so <laughs> there's not really uh sometimes sometimes you just got to break the rules as well you got to try things and uh, perhaps it looks good perhaps it doesn't perhaps it only looks good in some context and in other contexts it doesn't work so depending on the subject um those that's my sort of two cents anyway and uh let's have a look uh we Lily says thanks for the session. Lily says thank you for the session. I'll try to watch. Oh, I've already read that out. I think that's pretty much it. Um, um, let's have a look. Ooh, just a lot of thank yous from people. Really appreciate it, guys. Um, from Lena, um, Mary, and uh, Amy Bell. Thank you, um, guys. Martha. Martha says. It's my first class plan to return <clears throat> and I'd love to try some flower scenes. Awesome, Martha. There's also lots of previous uh, lots of previous classes as well. If you're on YouTube, just check out the previous ones as well. I've done about, I think I've done nearly 30 of them. If you go back and just check out all the ones I've recorded, um, watch over them. If you've got any questions, send them to me um, in the chats and stuff. I'll get back to you. And, uh, you know, Doris says, thank you so much for this tutorial. Thank you, Doris. Silva. Sylvia McCormack, thanks Sylvia. Um, Jocelyn, oh Jocelyn Stevens. Um, we've also got uh, Linda. Linda Beatty says thank you so much. Love, love how you enjoyed how you sorry explained what you were doing. The computer screen's quite far away. I don't need glasses just yet, but sometimes it can be tricky to sort of see. <laughs> Margaret McFadden says these are wonderful. Thank you, Margaret. And um, Lily says I'm glad I was able to watch part of this. Very instructional, clear explanations, and his excellent results. Appreciated. Uh, thank you, Lily. And you know, you guys also help help me to continue on doing this. And uh, you, you, you know, this is the good feedback you get, and just seeing some of you improve as well really um, makes it very very rewarding for me. And uh, you, you, you know, to sit here for some hours and go through it and for yourselves and your, for your patience and for your, um, your commitment to, 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 to yourselves and your, and your progress. I think it's really takes a lot to sit here for this amount of time. 
um, listening to someone, listening to me yap on for however many hours and uh, giving it a giving it a try. So really congratulate you to, for coming along and just, yeah, just um, having that patience and the, the, the perseverance to continue and some of you coming in week after week. It's been fantastic. Um, a few more comments on YouTube. Um, uh, if I haven't heard from you from YouTube or Facebook anymore, you know, leave a leave a comment so I can just um, see your name and I try to remember you for future ones. You know, um, it's, it's always nice to meet new people from different areas and see what you think of the, these classes and um, how long you've been painting for. Um, you, uh, thank you once again. Uh, you, you, Yvonne says you're welcome. Slowly improving with um, your teaching. Awesome. Yvonne, and Yvonne, I really liked your painting the other day of this scene. You did this scene um, in your own in your own style. The soft, the wet on wet work in there was fantastic. So um, keep up the good keep up the good work. Um, love what you're doing, Yvette Paul. Thank you, Darren. Lots to work on this week. See Wednesday. Thanks, Yvette. Catch you then. Phillips says love to thank those who selflessly support uh these lives especially for those who can't afford the moment to give thank you so much yeah look um it's just a bonus if if people donate stuff like that's just a bonus let's put the link down i'm just happy to have you have you guys along and and um, share what i know because um uh, you, you know i think knowledge and videos out, out there are common there but quality knowledge is difficult to come by and so I, when I come out here and I do these things, I do my best to share as much as I can and explain it in a way uh, that gives you as much value as possible. Because sometimes, you know, one of the feedback I used to get when I was doing these to start off with was that I would just say, I get a bit of yellow, put that there, put that there. But I wouldn't say how, you know, what concentration and why am I doing it? Um, those type of things you often see in tutorials, and it just frustrated me when I was starting out painting watercolors. I just didn't understand what people were doing, um, and I thought it was magic. You know, maybe I just wasn't. Maybe I'm just not cut out for it. But you know what? Um, everyone's cut out to to paint. Um, it's just practice, understanding. There's a process behind it, just like anything. It's like cooking, right? You know, I, I often used to tell myself I'm a terrible cook, and if I don't put in, <laughs> certainly if I if I just grab a few um, ingredients and just chuck them together. It's not going to be good. But if I follow a recipe and I know generally where I'm going, I come up with something decent. Um, but sometimes it's easier to tell yourself as a beginner, I'm not, this is not for me. I'm not cut out for that. But that's, that's, that's the easy way to, to tell yourself something. And like, it's a lot more complicated than that. If you have the right tools and you have something explained to you, and you have the perseverance to continue and to try and to try and fail. That process of trying and failing over and over again and not caring if you fail because failure is just a way for you to learn. And just link it as a learning opportunity. I'd, maybe this one's stuffed up. Okay, maybe I made some mistakes there, but I like how I did that. I'll try that next time. Or I won't do that one. Or I won't do that next time. So um, it's a psychological thing as well. And I think... People um, certainly give up too early, and um, I hope I can help to build that kind of resilience and help sort of uh, pump you up a little bit and and let you know this took a very long time to be to do this. It took an extremely long time. I, I've got a long way to go myself in terms of my art. You know, I, I my art journey. I, I really want to start doing uh, more complex scenes. I want to be more patient with my art as well. I find that I'm too gung-ho at times going in and just doing things quick but if i if i can build a bit more patience with my artwork i think i can take it to a, to a next to a next level so there's things i've got to work on as well um fantastic and phil uh philip says looking for um yeah yvette says uh looking forward to seeing philip's work awesome great thanks for thanks for supporting uh yvette and uh philip says glad to join the community and uh, so nice to find like-minded people who are pleasant to interact with yeah, this um, one thing I've noticed about the, this uh, little community that we have here is um, you guys are just so polite and so um, supportive of me. And, uh, you know, it goes, it really goes along, it really goes a long way. Um, and I, like I said, 
any constructive feedback, I'm always happy to hear that as, as well. But I, I think you guys are especially nice to some of this. I know I have, there was a couple of demonstrations where I didn't think I did so well. Um, maybe you guys were being polite, but you know, uh, any feedback is always good. Um, but it's, it's, it's a great motivation to me. You guys are helping me out a lot as well. Um, Martha, there's a coffee from Martha H. Carl. Thank you, Martha, for the, for the coffee. And, um, I think I saw your name. I think I saw your name in one of the chats before, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, uh, but really appreciate it. And uh, Yvonne says, that's what I like about your teaching. The ways, uh, the whys you teach are trans, the whys you teach are transferable to doing uh, my own photos. Yes, yes. I, I think at times I have to be general enough. Uh, I have to be specific enough in terms of my process and how I achieve results, but general enough so that you can apply these same techniques to different scenarios. My you know, my um, dream is to see some of you, some of you guys go off and um, be successful in your paintings. And, um, and, and, you know, some of, some of my, my viewers and students, for example, Yvette, um, Patricia Stanton, um, she hasn't been on for a little while. I think she's been quite busy. Some of you have gone on to, to put your, your work and stuff into, into exhibitions and, and have gone on to develop your own styles from, from um, just just being spurred on from a from a, a workshop that I ran, yeah, and and I, I love that. I think it's um, I wish you all the success and and um, it's it's such an amazing thing when you can um, have your artwork out there, have the confidence to put your artwork out there at once, and then also have other people that appreciate it to the point that they are willing to um, to pay for it or to view it in an exhibition. I think that's such a such a rewarding such a rewarding thing. Um, if some of you are also, I'm, I'm not the expert or anything like that in terms of selling work, but courses, um, a little bit of how to start YouTube channels and stuff. I know a little bit about that because I've done it for like a year. I'm certainly not an expert, but if you're ever wondering how to do that, you're, you're um, an artist and you're, you're um, looking for some tips on how I start and some things here and there, reach out to me, reach out to me and I'll help you out with that as well. I found that was difficult as anything when I was starting out. I, I tried reaching out to a couple of artists that I, that I watched and they didn't respond to me and, um, or they kind of like, um, they were not very, uh, polite to me. So if I see your message and, um, you know, while I, while I'm relatively, I don't have a huge amount of followers and you're wondering how did I get to this point where I'm doing these lives and doing all this stuff and, you know, having some of my courses up, I'm happy to share how I, how I did that. Um, I don't know if that's interesting for some of you though, because I know a lot of people who watch these videos, you're here just to watch these tutorials and learn about watercolors. But at the same time, I know, you know, Nikki, Nikki's interested in, in some of that content. So, um, you know, even if I don't have any of those videos out, sometimes I might be pretty busy. Um, Nikki, you can always just contact me, message me, and I'll give you a hand. Um, if you want a bit more information, always happy to share that and uh, wish you all the the success. I, I want you to even do better than me. If you end up, if you end up, um, you know, having a million followers and and um, becoming a better artist, not better, but like you know, have, having um, you know, fantastic artwork out there, and you end up having your own um sort of channel and stuff that's that's power to you i would love i would love to help out so um i think that's pretty much about it i think we've we've covered off on all the chats and uh you know i'm just having a look to see if there's anything else guys but um i but we should pretty much be okay if you have any extra questions extra comments let me know. Um, like the video. You're if you're on YouTube, um, I would appreciate if you if you like the video and you want to see more stuff because I have weekly classes and it reminds you if you sub if you subscribe and you know the bell notification that kind of stuff it will it will notify you of when I have a, a video up. Same on Facebook, it will notify you if you follow my channel, or subscribe, or whatever. There's a thing there. Uh, people ask when the the, the lives. They often um, at the moment I'm doing them Wednesdays and Saturdays. So. I'll continue doing them on Wednesdays and Saturdays um, for the foreseeable future. You know, I may reduce them down um, later, depending on how we go, whether in time constraints and stuff like that. 
and work on a few things as well but i'll always have some free ones that go up and uh because i just i love interacting with a lot of you guys out here so that's helping you um right oh uh i think we're all good so thank you all for joining uh well, i hope to see you again in the future and i hope this has been helpful for you and uh have a great day and i'll 